So this is Return of the Jedi with uh, Steve. Will. Sorry, I was zoned out. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this should um, sync up with, I think, just about every version since the special edition. I don't think there's been very many changes to Return of the Jedi. Um, so yeah, enjoy. All right. A long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. I'm going to read the crawl this time. I'm going to do epic voice. I'm not going to screw it up. I'm going to let you do it. I've been listening to uh, Andy Circus read Lord of the Rings. Oh, good choice. Yeah. All right, ready? Star Wars. Episode 6. Return of the Jedi. Jedi. Uh-oh. That's a bad sign. Luke Skywalker has returned to his home planet of Tatooine in an attempt to rescue his friend Han Solo from the gangster's clutches. Or, no, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I messed it up instantly. Yeah, you're one to talk. Friend yeah. Han Solo from the clutches of the vile gangster Jabba the Hutt. Little does Luke know that the Galactic Empire has been secretly begun construction on a new armored space station. Even more powerful than the first dreaded Death Star. When completed, this ultimate weapon will spell certain doom for the small band of rebels struggling to restore freedom to the galaxy. Dot, dot, dot. Only three dots this time. Oh, yeah, they did four in the <laughs> other one. Yeah, I know. So, I don't know who shuts that fourth one. Yeah, that fourth dot, that's really... Uh, that's how they get you. The mark of the beast. The fourth dot. <laughs> Alrighty. I feel like that's one... It already looks sharper. I don't know if it's just me and I'm tired or whatever, but it, it looks sharper. This like the stars and everything. Yeah, they're more pronounced, I think, for sure. Although I guess maybe they went back and digitally changed it because Disney likes to do that. It's quite possible, yeah. Oh, look at that! That's good stuff. Mm -hmm. Now I think Return of the Jedi is kind of the beginning of the end of a certain type of Star Wars, and it's very much the beginning of Star Wars. As George Lucas's ultimate vision, as opposed to a collaborative effort. Well, because, yeah, A New Hope, George Lucas directed. Mm -hmm. Then he was like, damn, I didn't do a very good job of that. Let me go find other directors. Yeah. They did. Because Empire is, I can't think of the guy's name. but Irving Kirshner. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then they've got in another guy from something else that I think he worked with George on to do Re Return of the Jedi. Yeah, so uh, there's a bit of a story, and I'm, I'm going to weave a narrative through this whole commentary. You're going to do, gonna do a good job on that. Um, so yeah, um, I should have probably touched on this in the Empire Strikes Back commentary, but Empire went really over budget. Like, really over budget. And it was an independent film, and it was basically mostly um, built off of George's own finances and bank loans. And uh, once the banks found out how bad it was they stopped funding them and they had to go to a new one <laughs> and they they caused them to the banks demanded to fire um gary kurtz the producer who was like supposed to keep everything in check but didn't um and after the film came out and everyone was praising the direction and all that stuff george lucas kind of took it a bit personally he didn't really like how oh look at those map paintings oh they're beautiful yeah he didn't really like how kirshner had um gotten all the kind of all the glory for elevating something, you know, like he thought it was a bit insulting and Kirshner didn't want to come back to do Jedi. Cause he didn't really want to be under like as a Lucasfilm employee. He didn't really want to be tied down to that. He liked doing his own things. Oh, here just comes Vader off his shuttle, which I love the design of these shuttles. They look really, they good. are cool. They don't look very practical though. There can't be that much space inside them. Yeah. There's Michael Pennington as a uh, Moff Jajerod. I watched a uh, documentary, and he was the narrator of it. It was that uh, Icons of... Uh, oh, what was it called again? <laughs> I'm gonna, I'll am gonna i pull up a little visual for that. But he was the narrator of it. Wasn't and it like Icons of... It wasn't Star Wars. It was something else, didn't wasn't it? Icons of something, anyway. Yeah. Uh, but he was the narrator, and he did a really good job. He's got a really great voice. Um, but originally, you know who auditioned for that role, Will? And didn't get it? Alan Rickman. Wait, what? <laughs> yeah. He auditioned for the role and uh, didn't get it. I don't think Alan Rickman would fit here. Well, there was a lot more um, scenes with this character that are mostly deleted. He's barely in the movie, actually. Um, but there's like a whole like subplot of him like kind of feuding with Vader a bit. Like, well, the Emperor said you can't go in this room, Vader. And there's another scene of him when they're about to fire the Death Star. And he's like, uh, but there's some people on there 
that are like our people. We shouldn't do this. <laughs> and he does this whole like internal conflict. He's actually a complex character, but uh, we don't see a lot of that. Lost. Now, this movie is directed by Richard Marquand, who is not held in very high regard by his coworkers. Wait, really? Yeah, people don't like him that much because he was like very ineffective. Uh, but he was uh, like a, a working director in Britain. He did a lot of BBC stuff. Um, but uh, it was either between him as a director or oh, that's been expanded for the special edition. Um, I actually don't mind that they expanded it, although yeah, it's a little over the top. But when they go to the interior, it doesn't match. No, it doesn't. Um, but uh, it was between him and David Lynch. Yeah. Twin Peaks own the Elephant Man's David Lynch. I don't think David Lynch would have done this movie the right way i think no, he would have it, david lynched it it would have been like dune will it would not have been good yeah um, but david lynch originally had agreed to it and then like the next day he's like no i don't want to do this and there's a very funny interview where he's talking about like meeting with george lucas he's like they went to a restaurant and all they sold was salads <laughs> and he's just it's so distraught from the situation like I don't, I don't know david lynch is a character he's not even a a human almost he, but it makes him a really interesting artist, I find, because he's so out there with his ideas. Well, he has some great films. Oh, definitely. I like. I, I love his stuff. Couldn't really get make it through Twin Peaks. That was a bit much for me. But um, but yeah, I liked him a lot. Duo. Yeah. R two and C three PO. It's like peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, the interior, it kind of works. Like, you don't really see... Like, it could extend onto the right. Yeah, it could, I guess. I, it's just one of those things where it's like, you didn't need to do that, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, you're not gaining or losing anything from it. I love the Gamorrean Guard. Well, I, I, I like them, but they're very much a sign of the... This is fantasy more so than this is science fiction. I, I don't like when aliens are just kind of animals, but with human bodies. I actually don't mind them though. They they're the little pig guy. They're little pig guys. They look pretty cool. They they're not they're cool as designs, but I feel like they kind of they take me out a little bit. Yeah, they're not. I I don't know though. I feel like they fit the vibe of Star Wars and Star Trek. Like that's what. Yeah, it does feel more like a Star Trek. Or although they they would look really good as if those were the orcs in Lord of the Rings, just the, these pig people. This tentacle guy, I despise what they did with him in Boba Fett. Yeah. Where he somehow, as this dude, one, survived the whole, you know. Well, it's debatable if he's actually on the sail barge or not, because you don't really see him. I think in behind-the-scenes photos he's there, but... Okay, well, yeah. regardless of that, how does this guy, who clearly no one seems to particularly respect... Yeah, he's like... He's, he's, he's Jabba's, like... <laughs> the guy who, like, keeps track of his, like, stuff. He's like his butler, you know? Yeah, how does he take over the empire of Jabba? Yeah, where's the little rod of the hut? He should have taken over. Yeah, like, I, I don't know. Oh, and here's the reveal Wait, of Jabba the Hutt. I never noticed there's a Jawa fanning him. Yeah, there's there's so much different aliens in here. Weird little, like, yak people and three-eyed Rees. Actually, that three-eyed character there was the original design for Admiral Akbar, but they had trouble with the, um, the cameras. Because it was like, this guy's got three eyes. Where's the focal point? <laughs> they couldn't figure it out. So they were like, okay, it's either this fish guy or we're going to replace him with a human. One or the other. I actually never noticed that a Jawa is fanning yeah. Jabba. There's a lot of like interesting aliens just popping up. And there's a lot of Greedos just hanging around. Man, this this Jabba, I guess it's technically a costume because it's two or three guys it's just in there. It's a lot of people in there. there, yeah. There's a bunch of people doing like the heads. There's two people doing the arms. There's there's a little guy with like a little wheel that he rotates to do the, the, the tail moving. But it's a really intricate puppet. And this is the how Luke is revealed in this. But there was originally other scenes shot before this uh, where he's like sitting in a cave and he's building a lightsaber and Vader's calling out to him. That would have been cool to see. And he lights it up. And it's, really, it's a neat scene. Uh, you can find it on YouTube. But um, it, it kind of works as an intro for Luke. And this also works. I think this like, works better, though. Yeah, it, it fits his character better. I think it would have been cool, though, to see him building lightsaber mm -hmm. and doing stuff like that. Yeah. One on the one fact of trivia I do know is they got the lady that plays the the dancer to come back like 20 years later and she did a bunch more. Yeah, yeah. And it looks flawless too. Yeah, like is... she did not age. <laughs> yeah. Granted, she's under costume and makeup and things, yeah, but still. Yeah, for sure. But even like today, you, still, you look at her and you're like, wow, she could still do this character. Like yeah. it's, it's incredible. 
that's the one fact of trivia I know. Mm-hmm. Also, Bib Fortuna, that uh, creepy tentacle man, he's voiced by the same guy who voices Admiral Akbar. Wait, really? Yeah. I did not know that. And they brought back that actor to play Admiral Akbar in The Force Awakens, and he was like 92 years old or something. I think he's the, like, the oldest person to appear in a Star Wars movie. Damn. Like, uh, like, in the film, like, at the age of when they filmed it, you know? Did they add more aliens to this scene? I don't remember this scene um, having so many alien guys just standing they've around. They've added some alternate shots in some parts of this, especially when we get to the um, infamous uh, dance sequence. But... Um, Okay, well, yeah, that I don't, I, that I knew about. There, there, there's some alternate stuff in here, but also it's like, that's a little, slimy looking hand. Yeah, that's a that's a hand that's been places, and that's a tentacle <laughs> that's also been places. They, they're probably friends. Um, <laughs> yeah, but it's interesting the the Jabba Palace stuff because it takes up so much of this film. It uh, really does. It's, I don't know, I don't find it as engaging as some of the other stuff, but I do find it's. Very interesting in how much it's shaped Star Wars going forward. Like, I think this has had more effect on where Star Wars went in the prequels than, like, the other stuff. And especially the droids, too. There's a lot of droids in this. Yeah, how did how did Anakin build that man to have oh. six... Also, how is there six million forms of communication and, like, two people in Star Wars speak a different language? Yeah, I don't know, It's man. like Jabba and, uh, what's his face from Pod Racing? Yeah, Sebulba. Yeah, Sebulba. Those are, like, the only two characters that don't speak English. Yeah, this, it's very rarely do we see... And I guess, like, Babu Freak, but he's still speaking English, but yeah. with a Babu Freak accent. Oh, there's that crazy Art Deco robot again. Well, because wasn't that supposed to be the original design of Darth Vader? I think that's that's an uh, that's an old design of something, yeah. Like I think that was how they were gonna design Darth Vader's helmet or something, and they painted it white. Mm-hmm. I mean, it would have been a completely different film if they did that. Like that would have been scary. <laughs> not that Darth Vader's not intimidating, but oh no. Well, who's the blue guy again? Because he's my favorite. Oh, Max Rebo. Yeah, Max Rebo. And there's a lot of debate if he has two arms and he's just sitting on his butt. Or if he's got, like, arms and his legs are stuck inside of that. Because some of the toys they have is just, like, the legs and he's got arms on top. Others, it's just, those are his only limbs. I'm going to say he has legs. Yeah. Oh, no. I'm going to talk over this. Uh, I got some fun facts. So, uh, the lady with the three breasts, well, three layers... Um, she was like handpicked by Richard Marquand to be in this movie. Um, it's Claire Davenport. That's the actress's name. She was big in, um, England for a while doing stuff. Like she's, um, she's in Faulty Towers, just like everyone. Um, she did, uh, she was, I think one of the first people to appear on the BBC nude, like really early on. Um, it's a weird fact. (laughs) Well, I just know these things. She's also in, uh, the Doctor Who epic. Oh, there she was. Marco Polo, which is completely lost, so you can't watch it, unfortunately. But she was, you know, dressed up like a Chinese person, so uh, kind of for the best. Um, but yeah, she's also in uh, Birth of the Beatles, which is the first biopic of the Beatles made. And I think it's the only one that was made during the lifetime of John Lennon, like when he was still alive. I think it came out in 79. But uh, yeah, I have a quote from Richard Marquand about her. Quote, I selected the flat. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I accept. I, my goodness. Let's try to read this again. Take three. I selected the fat lady because I think fat ladies are wonderful. Unquote. Which is a, <laughs> a great quote. And it's like one of the few times I actually have like written down things that Richard Marquand said. Because <laughs> he's not a very notable guy, I don't think. Like, I, I, he's not a guy who gets interviewed a whole lot. Okay, you know what? Pacing wise, mm-hmm. if they had originally done the song. Not CGI'd characters. Yeah. But if they had just done the song originally when they made this film, mm-hmm. I think people would have loved it. It's not bad. Controversial opinion. If that had been in the original, people would have killed. Like, that would have been sick. Because I think it works pacing-wise. It's not bad, yeah. It's a little awkward, I think, because of some of the CGI stuff they did. But, like, if they had played a song there, I think it would have worked. They did play a song. It's a different one. And it's a different tempo. 
Um, but this, like, the song itself is fine. But it's how it's executed that's the real problem. Also, that's just it's a very frog jarring. in that bowl. Like, you can see it moving around. Yeah, he's just having the time of his life. Well, maybe not. He can't really, he can't really reach the edge. <laughs> Only 12 toads were drowned in the making of this film. But anyway. Um... Yeah, the the plan to rescue Han Solo is quite convoluted, to say the least. I don't get what the droids have to do with it. Like, why do you send them in at yeah, all? Yeah, like, because you have Lando who's already there, and then Leia shows up with Chewbacca as like bait, I guess, so she can get close to Han Solo and free him in the middle of the night. I don't know. They should have just had like hit the entire rebellion just bomb the place with Y wings or something. Or Luke could just walk in. Yeah, Luke could just do what he does, and no, like no one else really contributes much until they get to the sail barge. Like everything else is just Luke doing it until like the very end when <laughs> Hansel accidentally kills Boba Fett. I really want to be an extra in a Star Wars film, just be some weird, wet-looking alien guy in the background. Yeah, I want to be one of those. I want to be a Greedo, but with those those weird long fingers that you can't <laughs> hold anything. <laughs> Because there's a bunch of them in this. Yeah, with the, like, suction cup ends. Yeah, suction cup ends, and they, they don't fit right, so they're all just kind of f- flailing about willy-nilly. Oh, 3PO's been finger painting. Uh-oh. Hopefully that connection fits, or fixes itself. Oh, thank the maker. Actually, in that shot there, you can see the original um, puppet of that screaming guy. Yeah, Max Rebo. Yeah, Max Rebo, there he goes. Ew, he's got tentacle things hanging off his chin. I never noticed that. I like Boba Fett nods. He's like, he's well like, done. <laughs> Respect. Wish he had some lines in this. The whole thing of Lando pulling down his mask is always so goofy. <laughs> and like, wouldn't Jabba know who Lando is? <laughs> like, You'd think. But there are some inconsistencies in this movie that I will point out when we get to them. That just... It, because, like... There's no continuity, I don't think. Jabba knows who Han Solo is, and presumably knows who Han Solo's friends are. Yeah, presumably. Presumably. Or other people around, Boba Fett, whoever. Yeah. So would they not go, you know what? Yeah, Boba, you, Boba yeah. Fett would definitely know who Lando is. Yeah, exactly. Sure. Boba Fett's around there. He, he met, he talked to him. <laughs> he literally got him from him. Yeah. Like, I guess, like, it's a big universe, and you see a lot of people. Oh, here's everyone in their little... Orgies. Yeah, how do you bonk your head on that? It's so obvious. Like, well, I guess you can't really see. Mm-hmm. I wonder if that was scripted or accidental. Well, I don't know. Because presumably, Carrie Fisher can't see anything out of that mask. Yeah, it doesn't look very practical. Also, there's a weird matting thing on the side there that they did. That's in the original movie. I don't know. Well, there's a Tauntaun head on the left there. I yeah, never Tauntaun that. and some other cow thing. I think that's just a cow. <laughs> yeah, they just... Some guy actually ran out over a cow when they were making the movie, and they're just like, we're going to use it somehow. George Lucas ate it, actually. It was one of his snacks. They just fed him a whole cow, and they were like, wow. So that's where the chin came from. (laughs) That would explain it. Does that block of presumably Mark, or not Mark, Harrison Ford sculpture thing, presumably that exists out in the world? Um, I don't know. Parts of it might. I think some of the like the molds and stuff might, but uh, I've I've not really looked into that. Well, because like that whole thing would be like a model that they made, like mm-hmm. a prop. So presumably that prop exists and someone owns it. It might. Um, it might have got destroyed though. Like some stuff disappeared after they made the movie. I feel like that's something though that you can't really yeah. take easily. Yeah, like Han Solo's like his blue jacket from Empire Strikes Back that disappeared after they made the film because it was like rented out. And then the, the place that rented it, they rented it from, like, burned to the ground. So it's probably gone, but they did find, like, other stuff that they returned that, you know. Someone definitely stole. Destroyed. It, it could have been, or it could have gotten split up, moved somewhere else. Like, it's, yeah. I feel like if your goal is to rescue him, you would just leave, regardless of him being able to see it. Imagine. Imagine okay. that's the voice you're meted with, like, waking from this <laughs> nonsense death. Someone who loves you. 
Michelle. <laughs> what? <laughs> Luke. <laughs> oh, what's the name of the girl from Solo? I don't know. Daenerys Targaryen. <laughs> yeah. It shows how much of an impression that movie made on us. <laughs> I actually really like that movie. I just can't think of that character's name. It's not important. We'll move on. Let me. <laughs> but imagine he says her name <laughs> instead. I know it. It's on the top tip of my tip of my tongue. Damn, apparently Solo has... Or wait, no, wrong Solo. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of movies called Solo. Yeah. Also, you know that little puppet guy? Um, oh, what's his name? I'm blanking it. Salacious P. Crumb. The puppeteer who played him really pissed off Han Solo when they were making this. Because <laughs> Han was... Or not Han Solo. Like, the character. Uh, the actor, Harrison Ford, got really pissed off with that puppeteer. And like tried to get him fired. Why? Yeah, he's just pissing him off. <laughs> like, but like how? He's just like making noise and stuff. Like <laughs> just talking to him weird. <laughs> like he's like ruining shots and stuff. And he was just like, get this guy out of here. And then, like <laughs> pretended to fire him, but he's like under a, a thing. So they're like, just, just stay here and shut up. I'm sure I could find like the actual interview of the guy, but it, it's kind of funny. Also, uh, the girl from Solo is Kira or Kiara. Uh, yeah, yeah, that that rings a bell. No, it's just a random Wookiee. <laughs> like, imagine. <laughs> yeah. Uh, ripped his arms off. <laughs> oh, Chief Tarples. Nice to see you again. Would other, presumably other Wookiees would know who Han Solo is because they're like, oh, yeah, Chewbacca, who's <laughs> likely super well-respected within the Wookiee culture. Yeah. Well, I, I can name three that know Harrison Ford very well. We got Itchy, we got Lumpy, <laughs> and we got Mala from the holiday special. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> They know him very well. Also, it's a weird, like, motif of having, like, Han Solo and Chewbacca just be in prison cells together. Yeah. They've done that quite a few times. And Luke just walks into traps. <laughs> yeah, there's no way in there even to meet him. Well, like, he kind of walks into a trap in A New Hope. Mm -hmm. Not in the same way, necessarily. Yeah, he's... He... But then he walks into another trap in Empire. Yeah. And then he doesn't really walk into a trap here. Because it seems like he plans this, but then he falls into the... Yeah, into the Rancor pit. Yeah, yeah. for sure. So, like, presumably he didn't plan to go <laughs> into the <Buddy>. pit. <laughs> Which one are you looking at? Saboba! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah Saboba! <Sabulba. laughs> also, also <laughs> the little Jabba's hanging from the... <laughs> Wait, really? <laughs> they, they're shaped like him, but I don't think that's what they're... They might be like seals or something, but they, they're shaped like Jabba the Hutt, kind of. Yeah, those are just, like, real frogs in the back. <laughs> yeah, there, there's some, like, very selective use of real animals in Star Wars. <laughs> like, I'll see 3 just looking the other way. Well, he's powered down, I guess, or something. Although, if we listen to that interview I showed you of, <laughs> of Anthony Daniels, <laughs> talking about how he's, like, peeking over Jabba the Hutt, staring at <laughs> Carrie Fisher in the, <laughs> in the suit that doesn't quite fit very well. <laughs> I would spend days just staring lovingly at Carrie. I mean, I would. <laughs> yeah. Poor Carrie Fisher. That would suck to be on set like that, like, just for days on end. Yeah. I, I don't know how long it took to film all this stuff, but it was a quite significant amount of time. Well, it's, yeah, it's a lot of shots. Presumably, let's say it took a week, at least. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know. But also, like, George Lucas has a weird fixation on slavery. Because <laughs> he does this in this movie, and then when you get to the next film, chronologically speaking, of producing... Yeah, slaves. Yeah, it's like Anakin's a slave, too. Maybe he's following in the footsteps of Dune, but slavery is not really a big thing in Dune. No. It's... Uh, it's I don't know. It's a strange, like, thing he's, like, focused on. I don't think there's anything wrong with well, that. Well, no, it's not. Like, it's interesting. But he doesn't do a lot with it. No, he does not. It's not even like he really, like, condemns it or anything. He's literally just like, no one does anything about it in the Star Wars universe. Yeah, it's like, it's so, like, almost universal, really, in Star Wars. Yeah. Which is an interesting way to take sci-fi. Oh, there's Dengar. <laughs> Dengar has to be so goddamn old. Because <laughs> he's in 
Clone Wars, and then he's in this, and I think he's in later things. I, there are, I think, some like designs in um, some of the sequel movies that's very much just like, this is probably Dengar, but we can't like actually say it's Dengar. The Rancor looks so cool. Mm-hmm. I like the Rancor, yeah. Like, as a kid, seeing the Rancor, I was like, oh my god. Well, when I was really young... And its eyes. The fact they gave its eyes light, I think that's what makes it... Yeah, for sure. When I was really young, um, I had seen The Phantom Menace, like, about 8 billion times. But um, of the other Star Wars movies, I hadn't seen anything except this scene. The, like, tail end of the Rancor fight, and the (laughs) very tragic Rancor Keeper, like, bawling his eyes out. And it confused me as a kid, because I was like, what does this mean? What is... What is this monster? What is? Why is this man crying? And I assumed that because the Rancor had failed, they were going to execute <laughs> the Rancor Keeper. And that's why he was sad. Not any sort of platonic connection to the Rancor itself. I, I just thought they were, <laughs> were going to kill him. And I just was like way too stressed out. I was like, I can't, I can't watch this movie. <laughs> I stopped watching it. It's actually really funny because that is actually probably could be why he's sad. Like, I know it's not. They, like, retconned it that he had, like, some weird relationship with the Rancor. Yeah, it's, it's a weird interpretation that, like, only a five-year-old could have. Um, but, yeah. But, yeah, so I, I knew, like, some of these visuals. And I knew that, that Rancor Keeper shot, like, very well. It's, like, embedded in my mind for some reason. Oh, there's a job again. I don't remember there being so many aliens in this scene. Yeah, it's quite a few. Like, it's... They went all out. Monk. (laughs) Presumably that would do nothing to the Rancor. Yeah, you just hit it with a rock very gently on its hand. No, Luke. Go back. Go back. All this false hope for Luke Skywalker. Couldn't he just use the Force <laughs> to, like, get the keys or something or a gun? I'll use the Force eventually. Well, you just keep watching. I know, but still. <laughs> I like the detail that she's, like, straining to actually watch it. Like, she's trying to, like, really lean forward. Yeah, she's just... chained at the neck. Mm-hmm. Although. No, I'm not going to say it. <laughs> yeah, don't say anything. <laughs> They're like, what? And Greedo's just filling his fingers. I love that sound effect. Get out of my way. (laughs) That's my boy. That's my boy. (laughs) That's my son. (laughs) I've abandoned my child. (laughs) See, it's a universal universal experience, Will. The the loss of one's... (laughs) Rancor. <laughs> like the other guy comes over and comforts him too. He's like, yeah, man. Well, there's an earlier shot of them and they're like arm wrestling. If you actually look really close. <laughs> Wait, I did not know that. Yeah. Do you, they're probably just on set. And they're like, hey, man, arm wrestle me in the back of this shot. And he's like, yeah, let's do it. Yeah, dude. And the other guy's just like in a mask, just pouring with sweat. He's <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, dude, whatever, man. I don't, I don't care, man, dude. We'll do whatever. Ew. What, what is that? that? <laughs> That's what disgusting. Is that? <laughs> it's a tongue on a wall. Yeah, what the heck is that? And why? I, that was not there before. No, that was. That's that's are, original. Are you sure? It, why is it trying to lick C-3PO's <laughs> shoulder? I don't know. It looks tasty, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> also, I never noticed there's like a cut on... What the... F- <laughs> <laughs> there's action figures of that thing. You're lying. There's I, no I'm way. not. <laughs> I don't believe you. Wait, they have something on a spit there behind yeah, him, too. some giant, like, the roast <laughs> beef. What, what is that thing? Oh, my <laughs> God. Yeah, there's a lot of details you'll you'll notice after you've watched this. Okay, I don't times. remember seeing like, half of this. But, yeah, um, another note on uh, Salacious Crumb. The, the, how they named him was when they were... Um, like during the uh, pre-production, there was one guy, and they were all out to dinner, and he got really drunk, and he went, he like leaned over and looked at his shoes, and they were untied, 
He's like, I need to tie my shoelaces. <laughs> like really slurred his words. <laughs> and then they were like, oh, that's a name. We'll do that. That's a character right there. I like that they just put a table on top of C-3PO. Yeah, R2 would make a, a great bartender. Oh, yeah, R2. Fuck. I'm an idiot. Also, Jabba always got the best tunes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Max Rebo is killing it. Oh, he's, he's excellent. I gotta hire Max Rebo. That green screen comp looks rough on that yeah. guy behind Han. This line here from Luke is really bizarre. Because, like, this isn't the first time Han Solo has been to Tatooine. Like, no. they, they literally <laughs> met here. <laughs> you, he's just like... Yeah, I used to live issue. here, you know? Yeah, I know. I was here. <laughs> yeah, dude, that was three years ago. I know. <laughs> I lived here, too. <laughs> I used to live here. Why I had an apartment think, on Mos Eisley. Why do you think Jabba wanted me? <laughs> I met Jabba the Hutt here. <laughs> like, last time I was here, we did the same thing. <laughs> like, what, what do you want from me? <laughs> Jabba <laughs> came, threatened me before we went. To rescue Leia. <laughs> and Luke's just like, oh, well, I, I'm trying to yeah. make a conversation here, this... man. I haven't seen you in a while. Like, yeah, dude, we're going to get executed. Like, like just... I used to live here, you know? Yeah, you're about to die here because you're not doing anything. <laughs> <laughs> you're talking so much bullshit. <laughs> That's honestly probably what Mark Hamill was thinking, knowing how he tends to be about Star Wars. Yeah. God, I hate the redo of this. It just looks out of place. <sighs> it's, it's. I get that so you want to add more to this weird sand pit mm -hmm. monster. He's got a megaphone. Oh, I heard Big Tim. <laughs> Not Big Tim. <laughs> Big Tim of the almighty Sarlacc. <laughs> the mighty Sarlacc. Big, Big Tim. Tim. <laughs> <laughs> also, because Richard Marquand has no imagination, uh, according to his co-workers, apparently, uh, they had to build this whole set. And it's like the largest set they built ever for Star Wars, I think. This entire sail barge they built. Because he was like, couldn't visualize things. Like, he couldn't think about, like, uh, special effects and stuff very well. So he's just like, dude, I just need you to build this whole thing for me. Like, okay, but <laughs> it is pretty cool they built it. <laughs> yeah, but it's only in one shot in its entirety. Yeah, but, like, it's pretty cool. Oh, it's really cool. And they actually blew it up for real. Um, but, well, that's yeah. kind of a waste. <laughs> Yeah, they spent all this budget and really pissed off George Lucas because he basically personally financed this film. Yeah, well, uh, and he was like, George Lucas is worth like a billion dollars now. So. Yeah, but he's busy building Skywalker Ranch, and his wife is allegedly cheating on him with the alleged uh, guy who did the stained glass windows on Skywalker Ranch, allegedly. Um, and <laughs> Wait, really? Yeah, that's, she denies it, but um, a lot of other people have said that's the case. Um, Are they still together? No, they, they break up when they made this film. Oh. She did, like, the edit for this for some of the emotional scenes as, like, a goodbye, basically. And then they just have never spoken again. <laughs> He's got a mural. Yeah, I himself. just saw that, too. <laughs> <laughs> I like the green lightsaber and the blue. I mm -hmm. get why they did it. Yeah, the green is really good. Although I'm still more of a blue lightsaber kind of guy. However, mm -hmm. the green does be looking nice. <laughs> 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 Fuck you, Boba Fett. I, what, uh... <laughs> he's just fumbling. Oh, he's flopped <laughs> and Lando's just dangling for his life. Man, this uh, this moment in the Lego Star Wars mm -hmm. game, classic. I remember yeah. trying to get my sister to jump between the goddamn <laughs> mini platforms. And she could never make it, so it's always like, drop out! Yeah. Just drop out! She's like, no, I can do it! And it's like, no, you can't! <laughs> yeah. Oh, what a time on the old PlayStation 2 or the Wii. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. And they're Empowerment. Like, Strangle your captor. Well, and she was like, I like that they asked her, like, oh, do you want us to get you a stunt double? And she's like, no, no, no. <laughs> Let me do it. <laughs> Just did a line of coke, and she's like, I'll do it, man. <laughs> I, I don't get why they would need a stunt double for that, though, to be honest. Like, it's not really a stunt. Yeah. Although, <laughs> the people inside were a bit concerned, because apparently she had high heels on and kept poking holes through the Jabba the Hutt puppet. Yeah, but they probably deserved it. They kept probably groping at half-naked yeah, the Carrie little, Fisher. Yeah, the little dwarf that's offering the tail, you know, like a stiletto right in the eye. <laughs> Ow, fuck. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> These extras are not moving with any sort of urgency. <laughs> yeah, no. No one... <laughs> they're just they're so lazy. They're just like... Just la lunging about. No one in Star Wars trying to kill anyone ever moves with any particular urgency. Yeah. He's like... He's slowly tracking his way down to try <laughs> to shoot them. These guys are just like... <laughs> like, I get they're like not used to this sort of stuff. They're just like, watch this gangster's house. But like... Yeah. <laughs> also, Billy D. Williams' son is in this shot, or in this scene somewhere. Wait, really? Yeah, he's one of these uh, aliens. Oh. Yeah, he was like in his 20s or whatever, and he's just like, yeah, I'll do it. That line's <laughs> it's been... all right, I can see a lot better. <laughs> That's such a good line. That line's been redubbed, actually. Really? Yeah. Oh. The original line is like, trust me, I know what I'm doing. Oh, I think this is the a lot better line. Which is the kind of line that, like, a really drunk dad would give to his son in, like, an archery tournament or something. <laughs> Don't worry, son. Put the apple on your head. I can see a lot better now. Toing. Ah! My eye! My leg! <laughs> you want to do that one again, Mark? Yeah, Carrie Fisher is, like, naked, naked. Mm hmm it's a cool costume, though. It's very, very Flash Gordon. But, um, yeah, maybe not the most, like, best choice of costume for, and like, character development. And C-3PO always gets pushed and, like... R2 is just always bullying C-3PO. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, let's make sure we grab those guys. Because they can't handle themselves. How did they get so buried in sound so quickly? <laughs> I don't know. It's a good looking explosion, though. Mm -hmm. I like how some of it's in slow motion. <laughs> yeah, some of it is, some of it isn't. It's like, what? And now, after this part, would have been a deleted scene, which was the first thing they actually shot, um, which was that sandstorm stuff. Where they're like trying to get back to the Falcon and the X-Wing and it's all just sand blowing everywhere and Leia kisses Luke yet again. Um, yeah, this is probably a good thing they cut it. Well, they cut it because it was so technically inferior. They're like, Mark One, we can't fucking hear these people talking. And this looks like absolute ass. We can't do this. Uh, and then so George got involved again. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, uh, yeah, I'll just do all the second unit stuff. You just try to fucking make this movie work. Uh, it's me, George Lucas. Hey guys, I'm George Lucas. The um, neckbeard yeah. master. Um, uh, please, uh, cut it. Um, yeah, my ex-wife, uh, uh, sucks. Faster, more intense. <laughs> oh yeah, here we go. That's what my lawyer said to me. <laughs> when I was writing the paperwork for a divorce. Uh... <laughs> Sorry, uh, George, you shouldn't listen to this. Worth a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. Another epic matte painting. I want one of those paintings so bad, and I know that's not reasonable at all. Oh, they're, they're gorgeous. You could probably get a print of it made. Oh, 100%. I can get a print or a photo of it or something. Mm -hmm. But, like, to own that canvas or... Oh, and yeah. they're not even made on canvas, but... They're made on glass, yeah. Yeah. Do you know the art of doing that has actually been lost? Pretty much, yeah. Like, it's, it's like, not something that's insane. Done anymore. Like, they don't know how to do those matte paintings, I think, the same way anymore. All these dignitaries with these giant, giant penis hats. Like, I, I think I remember seeing a video recently talking about matte paintings mm -hmm. and, like, the way they did them in film. And apparently, like, they don't know how they did them anymore. Yeah, that's it's tricky, yeah. I, I know they, like, would put them uh, in front of the the camera. Like, they'd be, like, the camera. They'd be, like, or, like paintings. Maybe, and there'd be or the other not stuff, even, but... like, they don't know how they did them. It's just, like, certain aspects of it have been lost to, like, mm -hmm. time. Like, mm -hmm. there's just not people that do it anymore or something. So it's, like, one of those things yeah, where it's, the, like, oh. There's a lot of, like, older kind of... Um, like more hands-on kind of craftsmanship stuff that's people used to do in films that don't anymore. Also, we're talking over uh, the first appearance of Ian McDermott as Emperor Palpatine, which is some solid stuff. Like this is this is a performance that solidified an entire trilogy. I mean, following this, solidified an entire career. Dude has been in like eight films. <laughs> it pretty much, yeah. I I very rarely seen Ian McDermott in stuff outside of Star Wars. I can't think of a single thing. Like yeah. Off the top of my head, I don't know. I, he's in Dirty, ro Dirty Rotten Scoundrels with... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, that would... He's like a butler. He's okay, like, yeah, that I knew. Welcome to hell. <laughs> yeah, no, that I that I did know. Now that you're pointing it out. I think I showed you that that clip. Well, I watched that movie with my grandpa. That's one of his favorite movies. That's a great film. 
Yoda just pieces out, as we know. <laughs> if Yoda got off his ass, it's so yeah. much of this trilogy could have been different. Yeah. Also, is Yoda not like, why are you wearing all black, Luke? Like, come on, what are you doing? <laughs> well, here's an interesting thing. Going into this movie and into the pre-production of uh, Phantom Menace, there was kind of an idea floating around that the Jedi, what they used to wear was black outfits. Like, this was the outfits of Jedi Knights. Was the dark colors the the robes that kind of look like that? It's it's basically like the same kind of, um, like kind of weird roby bits there that's all tied together with a belt that um, like Obi Wan's wearing, but it's in black, right? Um, but this stuff is kind of conflicted with what the other stuff in this trilogy. Like we have Yoda, and he's very much not wearing that, but he's like you know a Jedi Master or whatever, and. Obi-Wan's also not wearing this stuff. He's wearing, like, the beige outfits. Yeah. Um, some people watching these movies have thought, oh, this is just, like, Obi-Wan's clothes when he's on Tatooine or whatever. Like, because Owen Lars is basically wearing the same stuff, these weird robes. Um, and they look at the prequels, how everyone's wearing stuff that looks like Obi-Wan. They're like, why is everyone dressed like they're on Tatooine, you know? And they see that as a problem. But by the end of this movie, when we see Anakin as a ghost, and he's wearing Obi-Wan's clothes... It kind of contradicts that idea. Like, actually, this is what Jedis are supposed to look like. That's how they've always been envisioned. And this Jedi Knight thing is sort of... It was an idea, but it's not really one that they actually settled on this early into the production. Also, rip a homeboy. A real G here. Yoda with his crossed eyes. I like that they get this scene. But now that I'm thinking about it, it's kind of unnecessary. Mm-hmm. It is. It's like Luke goes there, talks to Yoda for a little bit, and Yoda dies. Like he just is like, "Peace, I'm going to bed." Well, he's like, "Oh yeah." Like, Yoda this... tucks himself in, and he's like, "Good night." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, like Luke just keeps talking to him. He's like, "Clearly, he's going to bed." <laughs> like, <he's... laughs> yeah, he just dies because he's sick of listening to Luke. Yeah, like. Yeah, he's like, "Oh, need rest, I do." <laughs> Die tomorrow, maybe. If sleep I can get. <laughs> Yoda just pulls a Master Ugwe, although Master Ugwe technically pulled a Yoda because, you know. <laughs> That's how time works. <laughs> yeah, but. <laughs> but yeah, Luke's just like. For the young kids out there that definitely listen to these. <laughs> yeah, but Luke, I think this scene exists because they need to have somebody who is not Vader and who is not Obi Wan tell Luke. That this is what actually is your father. This is the actual history of it. Because Obi-Wan has lied to him. And Vader is evil, so we can't trust evil people. Yeah, but we says can George trust Lucas. Yoda, the trickster. Yeah, Yoda, the guy who is deceived. <laughs> Yoda, the deceiver. Yeah, this, this, this guy who looks like a goblin. He tells the truth. He doesn't speak in riddles. <laughs> Despite speaking in riddles. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, there's actually a continuity error with his ear. His ear was folded back the other way in the shot before this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was, yeah. <laughs> if this was a real person, that wouldn't be comfortable. No, it would not. That would suck. <laughs> Could you imagine if I just took your ear and just <laughs> bending twisted it? it? Yeah. <laughs> and it's not like... <laughs> Like it's, not, it's not like he has flappy ears like a dog or something. Like those no, things no. stick out. Like they're full. Yeah, that, that's cartilage right there. <laughs> it's bones, basically. <laughs> <laughs> Go to sleep, I am. <laughs> Die, I will. <laughs> yes, Vader, father is you. <laughs> father knew Vader did. <laughs> Secretly, under our noses, did he do that? How I know this? I don't know. <laughs> Blind we were, though I did see him kiss Padme once. <laughs> On Geonosis. Okay. It's very obvious. <laughs> you want to watch that happen? Yeah, if, if there's a scene in at uh, the very end of the duel with Dooku where like Padme arrives and like she like she kisses uh, Anakin very passionately, and you can see Yoda just in the background, just kind of like, <laughs> watching this happen. <laughs> like I think it's a big shot, like from like you know way above. And you see her arrive, you see her kiss him, and you see Yoda just walking towards them. <laughs> it's like, dude, this is like on the nose, man. Yoda always seems questionably evil in a way. Yeah, he's he's got that kind of... Like, he's kind of in the middle, like, well, gray I'm, area. Yeah. Not that he's evil. He's very clearly, a like, a good guy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But he's got that kind of, like... 
He's got like ulterior motives to things. Like yeah, yeah. Like he's, I mean, he is like a thousand years old, but mm -hmm. he's got like, he's pulling some strings. He's a puppet master of sorts. Yeah, however, he's a literal puppet master. <laughs> yeah, what is it, Jim Henson? No, it's Frank Oz playing him. Yeah, Frank Oz. Do you get my joke though, puppet master? Yeah. No, I got it. He's a, a puppet master. And he's also a master puppet. No, I I understood, <laughs> <laughs> and he's gone. <laughs> Just like my. My joke over Wilson. But then he just basically comes right back. <laughs> yeah, he comes back in, like, what, two shots from now? Like, like I, I, they could have just had him exist. Yeah, Yoda didn't need to die. Actually, when I was really young, I thought Vader killed Yoda. I thought they fought in, like, these weird, like, rafter kind of things, and Yoda's, like, flipping around and stuff, and I was like, oh, this would look so cool, and Vader's there fighting him against the green and the red. Uh, yeah, I was a bit disappointed. I had some, like, imagination <laughs> things around about by Lego, and I was just like, this Star Wars is so cool, dude. Dude, this is so Star Wars. I and mean, then I turned twelve and I watched this movie and I was like, "Oh, that's how that's how Yoda dies." I feel like Yoda didn't need to die. Now that I'm like actually watching this movie and I'm like, you know what? Story wise, I don't like that. <sighs> it's not really necessary. Like, I, I get like Obi Wan dying. That that adds weight to the story. Well, yeah, this... yeah, and he dies to Vader. Mm -hmm. Yoda just gives up and disappears. Yeah, like his contract runs out and he just is out. Frank Oz and Jim Henson were like, peace. <laughs> Later, dudes. From a certain point of view. Bullshit. I've, I've seen, okay. I've seen <laughs> philosophy people argue this of like, the philosophy of Obi-Wan. Does it make sense? And they're like, yes. But. Yeah. It's because they have to retcon back what the other movies did and blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah. Mm -hmm. But, like, it does work because to Obi-Wan, who basically has PTSD from fighting in a goddamn war, yeah. he lost his friend and brother and almost child, essentially. Yeah. Like, is it a good thing to tell him mm -hmm. or to tell Luke? No, obviously not. Yeah. But it's, like, one of those things where he's like, is he lying? Mm. Kind of, but no. Yeah. And the genius is, in that original Star Wars performance that Alec Guinness gives... There's enough ambiguity there to make it work. Yeah. Like, he, he puts enough layers into this, like, oh, should I tell you about this? And he kind of rocks in his chair a little bit. And he's all sad and stuff. It, it actually works, in a way. Yeah, Alec Guinness is... Also, I like how he, let him, like, sat down. Like, he's, like, tired, even though he's a ghost. Well, yeah, it's Alec Guinness, man. <laughs> I'm not going to do this unless I can sit on a log. Mm, lazy you are. <laughs> lazy you are. <laughs> Get off your ass. <laughs> Large deal and contract you have, maybe, <laughs> but family residuals they get many. Yes, me nothing. I receive nothing. I receive puppet. I am <laughs> foam rubber rotting away. <laughs> Someone definitely has that Yoda puppet just like sitting on a desk. I think Lucasfilm has it. It's like <laughs> rotted to nothing. It's just they should have like like air locked. Yeah, like just put it in an airtight container. Also, Luke is just immediately jumping to, oh, Leia's my sister. Like, yeah, how what? do you figure that out? Why do you know this? You've been crushing on her, and you were checking her out. Yeah, I, I would believe him more if he was just like, oh, my aunt Beru. That was the that was the the other Skywalker, or like someone from Tatooine. You know, like that would make more sense. <laughs> like someone that Obi Wan would be watching over, right? I love this shot. This whole like room here is sick. It's one of my favorite things in Star Wars. Oh, it's amazing. I think it's very indicative also of the direction Star Wars goes after this. Because this is like basically the um, briefing scene in uh, the original film, but done in the way that George Lucas would have wanted it ideally. It's like not mostly humans. There's a lot of aliens in this. There's a lot of like, uh, instead of generals, it's like politicians in robes. It's very much... The prequels before the prequels. Oh my god, what are those guys with their like brains coming out of their goddamn heads? Oh, the the, the prune face people. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> they're, they're called prune face. Um, <laughs> they make it to Endor. <laughs> really? Yeah, I, there's some shots of them on Endor. Okay, the, okay, also this lady, the girl they got for her for the prequels, identical match. Oh, it's really good. Yeah, I have a note about her. I gotta find it. But. Oh my god, look at that old guy in the back there. Look at him. He's like he's trying not to look at the camera. Look at him. Look at him. He's turning around. <laughs> he's so obvious, yeah. It's like, no, you don't do that if you're a background actor. Yeah, look at him. Look at him. He's it's, the continuity of him is wrong. He was walking away in the <laughs> other direction. Yeah, he's just he's doing whatever. 
Also, the bond. Ca- oh, you can see the green, the blue screen. Yeah, oh. it's not the best. But still, it's pretty oh, good. Look at their eyes. Like the like light even catches in his eye. As well, it yeah, there's like there. a lens over it. Yeah, and stuff. like that's it's, sick. I really like these guys. I can't read my own handwriting. Um, Caroline something or other. Um, <laughs> but yeah, she's. Uh, that I don't know, man. But um, she was having a lot of trouble reading with her lines, and like Caroline. Caroline Blichet, Blichet, something like that. Yeah, B L E C H E S T, <laughs> something like that. Yeah, but anyway, she was having a lot of trouble with her lines make in this film because like it's clunky. Like, oh, many buffins have died trying to yada yada yada. And Harrison Ford actually was like one the one who like actually helped her out with this stuff. It's nice of him. Yeah, and he's it's like nub nub, <sighs> or what's his name? Is it nub nub? Nine nub. Nine nub. Uh, mm-hmm. I was thinking of Noob Noob from Rick and Morty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, there was Wedge Antilles you just saw. And that guy. <laughs> I got some funny stories about I him. I could play that guy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I like that guy. He was the backup plan in case the Aquar puppets didn't work. I like that guy to the right of Leia. He looks like he's seen some shit. Like, yeah, he looks guy. like he's ripped right out of Vietnam. Yeah, this guy, like, he's burned a village. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah. Um, so that general guy. Uh, you may notice he's wearing a fake beard. Uh, that is because toy company Kenner, when they were making their action figures, uh, a guy called Jack Lemon, who was their one of their sculptors, made the figure, sculpted it, did a wonderful job, but had a beard on him for some reason. <laughs> that was not in the reference photos he was given. Um, I think what he did was he like took one of the generals from the first film and put that head on the person. Um, but yeah, so they were like... That's another great painting. Maybe I want yeah. that painting more. That would be a good one, yeah. Like, with all the ships and everything? <laughs> but yeah, they, they very rushedly... Oh, look, they got to try to carry the box. Why is he so hunched over? There are some matting issues in this these shots. Like, layers are not in the proper order. Like, for some of these people walking by, like, they'll walk in front of people they're supposed to be behind and stuff. Oh, I love the lighting and the look of this sh- scene. That, you can actually really see as a matte painting. Oh, yeah. Like, that really stands out as a matte painting. Yeah, the, the original Falcon um, set that they built got really roughed up so they couldn't use it I love that little like flick with the fingers there oh there's one of those prune face guys boarding huh yeah that guy's not walking to anything and Lando just walks into <laughs> well, the well you darkness. can see him stop you can see him <laughs> stop at the end you forgot his cigarettes he's gotta go back <laughs> <laughs> like you can see him it, like the cut is like a couple frames off yeah this is oh yeah like if we went back for that you would totally see oh it. you would yeah <laughs> also it would be <laughs> funny if they had, you could see Lando getting into the thing and he just waves to him now this year a lot of people pointed at Carrie Fisher's uh, weird fingernails uh, to show her crack finger um, oh yeah, why does she have one super well, long? Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna break this up. This, this myth right here. Yeah. Uh, not only had she gone on record saying that that was not her preferred way of doing it, she would use rolled up dollar bills. Um, <laughs> Wait, but really? the the thing is, is that's not actually her finger being really long. It's her middle finger being really short, and the other fingers are kind of on an angle, and so she just has like a broken nail, and it just looks weird. <laughs> so it makes the one finger look much longer than the others, is the thing in that shot. She actually went on record and was like, yeah, I actually do cocaine with rolled up dollar bills. Oh, she was very open, like after Star Wars, obviously, <laughs> um, like in the in the dark ages uh, <laughs> about this. You mean the like 80s? <laughs> well, yeah, the after times, uh, like between the films. Um, the 90s, 80s, 90s? Sometimes. These, these movies came out in the 70s and the 80s. <laughs> the dark age of Star Wars, well, between end of Jedi and like So the between prequels. 1990 and 2000. <laughs> it's something like Anyway. Um, yeah. Oh, look at those guys. Those guys get retconned into, like, doing so much. Yeah. They made action figures of those guys back in the 80s, and they did not sell very well. Well, no shit. They're like, oh, what should we make an action figure of? Imperial Dignitary. That's an idea. Random guy in purple robes behind mm-hmm. the Emperor. But, yeah, it's very much the George Lucas's, these are the shadowy figures, these husks of humans that are doing the bidding, you know? They do look cool. They do. I love the designs of them. Those are awesome costumes. Such a good design for ship, though. I like that, like... Well, I'm pretty sure there's not any scenes of, like, Han Solo, Chewbacca, like, the main characters, like these guys, in the Falcon in this movie. I don't think there's any shots of that. We have not seen any, yeah. 
And I don't think we ever get any. And it's not in the end. Like, Lando's in the Falcon for all of the shots that that's in, I think. Good what old... are the most droids? Yeah, why are there so many? <laughs> There's a fleet of them. Also, there was a weird um, contrast issue on Vader there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I really like the look of this film. I think I like this more than Empire. Empire looked weird, I feel like. Empire's really grainy, and it's really kind of... There, there is some strangeness going on with the colors and stuff. I, I had a funny conversation with um, one of the guys in the post team that I was working with. Yeah, yeah. And he was talking about movies, and he was like, oh, yeah, back when movies actually, you know, looked like movies. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, damn, you know what? He's not wrong. Yeah. Because, like, this is, like, what you think of and like, oh, a movie. It, mm -hmm. it looks like this. Yeah, 35 millimeter, really yeah, wide. Yeah, like, I, yeah. I don't know. And, like, I know digital and, like, it all looks like movies still now. But mm -hmm. it's, like, one of those things where it's, like, oh, like, I get what you mean by saying that. Yeah, for sure. Also, we see the return of Admiral Priette. Not um, that I have an issue with digital. Don't well, no, no, wrong. no. But I was just thought it was funny. But, yeah. We don't see uh, Captain Nita return. Um, don't. Because the character your... died. And also, um, for the audience, uh, it may seem a bit uh, inappropriate, the jokes you were making about the character dying, considering the actor died. Uh, uh, well, the news was released about two days before I dropped the video. Oh. Um, but he was alive when we recorded this. <laughs> yeah. He died when I was editing the video. I'm and they sorry, didn't announce Captain after. Nita's family. <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, sorry. Uh, please uh, don't Michael cancel Colin. us retroactively. <laughs> yeah, no, they're, they're fine, probably. I still stand by that being a funny joke, but um, yeah, the coincidence of that happening was slim. <laughs> well, yeah, like, like what's gonna happen? We're gonna record this, and like Anthony Daniels just drops dead. Like, what? don't jinx it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I, I, I don't think it's gonna happen. That's not very likely. But like these actors are getting pretty old these days. Like, oh, hundred percent. Like James Earl Jones is over ninety, well, which is a surprise to me. Carl Weathers just passed away, and I feel like he's someone that. Is kind of similar to this era. Yeah, but he was a lot younger than that. He was like. No, I know, but young, yeah. you get what I'm saying, where he's like kind of like same area of like actor. Yeah, like 80s actors. Like Stallone, yeah. Carl yeah. Weathers, Arnie, like. Obviously, Arnie and them are a bit older than them, I think, but. Mm -hmm. But it's all comparable, yeah. It's, yeah. it's pretty. Because they're like 70s, 80s actors. Because, mm -hmm. yeah, Rocky is what, 77? Something like that. It's, it's like early. it's insane. I can't believe Rocky is that old. Mm -hmm. It doesn't. It, it it feels like it hasn't aged really. Well, if you were like it's to pretty like, timeless. If you were to ask someone on the street, what year did Rocky came out? I bet they'd give you an answer in the eighties. Probably, yeah. But it's early. I really like the helmets and things they had in this. Oh, it's really good. It's very tactical. It's very yeah, yeah. yeah. I like a lot of this like more militaristic version of the rebellion. And they're all, like, scuffed, and presumably, like, those aren't their helmets. Like, they've just gotten them from other people. Probably dead people, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like, they're all filthy, and the Empire is, like, pristine, even though they're on this, like, yeah jungle planet, you know? But even the, like, speeder bike has, like, some scratches, and the paint is messed up. Mm -hmm. It's lived in. It's lived in, like all of Star Wars should be. Yeah, not like Star Wars is now. <laughs> they make a bit of an effort, but, you know. I don't know. Like, There's uh, too many <laughs> things now that don't look lived in. I like lived in. Mm -hmm. It looks better. You want to capture. It's not necessarily about capturing real life. Oh, big nice trouble. shot. Han, what are you doing, man? He just kind of vaguely tossed that guy. Just grab a gun. <laughs> They're very, like, touchy feely in this movie. Which is an odd choice. Yeah. Well, Mark Ron, what are you doing? I blame George Lucas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, George wasn't... Yeah, that's George's idea. Flying through these speeders in the forest would be so scary. Although, I will say, these are comped super well. Well, not super well, but <laughs> well enough. It's very... It, it's pretty good for the time. Like, you compare this to other movies that were doing similar stuff, and it's it's really good. Because they have, like, the foreground stuff going, and they have, like, background stuff. And it's they thought about And the sound design. Oh, the the trees sound, yeah. rushing by and that... The sound really sells a lot of Star Wars. If it didn't have as good of sound, it it would be a B movie at best, you know. Yeah, sound, VFX, costumes. <laughs> that guy's dead. <laughs> oh, hundred percent, he's dead. Just landed on his neck. Good job, Luke. Hope that that guy comes back as a Force ghost and haunts you. <laughs> Hi, it's uh, me, TK uh, twenty six oh nine. I want to know why what those guys were you? just sitting there. <laughs> like, what do you? <laughs> <they're> just... <laughs> 
You know what this makes me think of? It's a oh speed my god, draft. the Mandalorian show. You never watched the Mandalorian, did you? Uh, I saw season, up to season two. Season two. What the end of season two there, where, where the two um, speeder bike oh, scout trooper yeah, guys yeah, and they're like shooting at the thing. Yeah, and then they have uh, Baby Yoda in the bag, and the one guy just freaking punches Baby Yoda <laughs> in the goddamn head. Like that's so funny to me. Where he's like he's wiggling. And then they're like one guy like picks him up and like pulls him out. And he like puts his finger in. And he's like, "Ow, he bit me!" And then he punches him. <laughs> like, just... Yeah, I feel like though if the, if it wasn't a, a, like a, fan, a sci-fi or fantasy movie though, that wouldn't have uh, like yeah, that wouldn't have gotten like, a laugh. A kid, but, yeah. Like oh my god! But the fact that like oh it's Baby Yoda and he's meant to be like seventy. Yeah, it's... and he's like picks him up and he's like oh hey little guy and he's like puts this kid. And he's like, <laughs> it's like ow, it's like baby's he bit day me. out. And the other guy's like, I told you not to touch him. <laughs> It's just one of those things where I was like, oh my god. This guy's got the daintiest little gun. Well, yeah, I mean, guns in Star Wars are always small. Oh. He's like, yeah, I got, I show that girl. <laughs> he <laughs> dies. She, she couldn't have seen that. <laughs> she fell, like, in a hole. Yeah, <laughs> she's... You saw nothing. <laughs> she might saw a bit of light over the horizon, but... That could have been anything. Oh man, this also goes on a l pretty long. Like it's uh, yeah, but I think it's paced well. Like when it, you, oh, it is yeah, but it's because like, we've seen this movie so many times. Yeah, but like when you watch this movie as mm -hmm. a kid or whatever, you're like, oh my god. Yeah, this movie though I think feels more like sequences of things happening rather oh, than like very much something that flows all together. Like it does flow together, obviously, but it feels much more like I think it's just because it's kind of so many hard cuts between locations. Like mm -hmm. you you come into. Tatooine, mm. you hard cut out of Tatooine to Luke on Dagobah. Yeah. Hard cut out of Dagobah to, mm -hmm. yeah. to the rebellion in space. Like, there's not like, oh, you don't get the journey of Luke to Dagobah, mm. Luke out of Dagobah. And also, it's not like the other Star Wars movies where it's cutting back and forth between mm -hmm. different strands of story. Like, it's not like Star Wars where it's the following the droids and it's following Leia. And no. It's not like Empire where it's Luke and Yoda and yeah, exactly. the rest of them. It's not doing that sort of thing. It's very much... A continuous narrative. It's only going to Vader, very occasionally. Yeah, it's. I don't think there's anything wrong with that though. No, it, it, but it's a much more straightforward movie than the other two, I find. Where's also, the... why is Han wearing a trench coat? And everyone else is wearing like an actual uniform. Because it's Han. <laughs> Good point. No, it's because it's Harrison Ford. <laughs> well, that's what I meant. <laughs> I'm not wearing a poncho. I don't believe in ponchos. I'm too cool. People are going to say I look like Clint Eastwood or something. I'm not wearing a poncho. I saw another video about the style of Harrison Ford. Yeah. Harrison Ford's got drip, man. Oh, he does, yeah. <laughs> like, he's got some fashion icon status. Oh, here comes Wicket. I actually really like the Ewoks. They're so well done. Now, Wicket was a character that was designed out of necessity. Uh, because originally, this was going to be the character of Paplu, who was an Ewok, who will show up later. I'll point him out. He's got feather. Um, but... Papley was going to be played by Kenny Baker, famous of R2 fame. Uh, and one of a couple of things happened where he could not do it. Either A, he was sick, couldn't do it. B, uh, was terribly drunk. That's Anthony Daniels' story. And you can always tell why they don't get along. Or uh, C, uh, ate a bad chili dog and got really sick and couldn't do it. Uh, where he got a chili dog in the middle of a redwood forest from, I don't know. That's a story I've heard. <laughs> I don't know, man. Maybe uh, he has okay. catering for one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But apparently, yeah, he was just not able to come. Uh, I think all the stories have in common in vomiting. Uh, but, yeah. <laughs> they got Warwick Davis to come in and do it, who was a child actor at the time. He's very good. He has his own little, like, mini movie he made during the production of this, which has not really had any sort of release. But there's been some clips that they've put in documentaries and they've up they upscaled it. It's some really nice, like, behind-the-scenes stuff of Star Wars. But I think he does a really good job. So Wicked is a child actor? Yeah. I like, did. he's actually, you know, he was short, you know. No, I knew that, but, but I didn't realize that, like, he was a kid when he played him. Yeah, he was not an adult. Like, he was in his teens. And the uh, eyes they give Wicked, though, freak me out. Like, they look creepy. Yeah, I, I think the blinking and stuff is a special edition thing. And I think some of the texture they've put in there is also a special edition thing. But I do love this scene, because Leia is very human in this. Yeah, yeah. Like, very motherly, almost. Well, and Wicked's like, I don't know about this here hat thing. Yeah, she's like... <laughs> she's doing her own thing.
some weird haunting whistles. I mean, those forests would technically be horrifying. Where did they film this? Presumably uh, near L.A.? Northern California, I think. Yeah. I want to go to the Redwood Forest. That'd mm-hmm. be sick. Yeah, some of the stuff is like, you know, soundstage, but like a lot of it's like, you know, out there in the wilderness. Yeah, try to find the sniper with your pistol. Yeah, good job, Leia. Well, better than the guy with the spear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he he doesn't have technology. <laughs> He didn't even understand what a hat was, Stephen. <laughs> he's wearing one, too. <laughs> no, he's got a hood. It's oh, not the same. Oh, okay. The, fucking Ted here's got a hood. I gotcha. <laughs> what? <laughs> I wish that, that was cut a little earlier, so it actually sounded like he was going to say something. That guy's not a very good driver. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's not a good shot, but he's not a good driver at all. <laughs> Dude crashed into the... <laughs> good job, Wicket. You did all that yourself. You know what I don't get? What? The Ewoks build those, like, super complicated, like, tree house city. Yeah, yeah. He's gold... But he has the, like, most primitive-looking spear possible. <laughs> yeah. How did they build it? Yeah, dude... Dude has learned snow napping, and he's like, no other skills. <laughs> Is it just Wicket's an idiot? And he's like, ah, let me, let me go over here. He's like an me. actual child. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, just. <laughs> Man, those Imperial Guards, too, they look sick. Oh, they're a fantastic design. And they I do really... absolutely nothing, but they look cool. <laughs> and I like how in The Phantom Menace, they have them, but they're, like, blue, and they have, like, the big, like, yeah, horse yeah. detail on top of them. But then by the time they get to, I think in, I think in Attack of the Clones, they have the red. I'm not too sure, but definitely in by the time of um, Revenge of the Sith, brain fart, uh, they're in them as well. And they do almost less than this. <laughs> they fall over. <laughs> yeah. Yoda wrecks them. Mm. Uh, technically, they do more because in this, all they do is leave. Yeah. They, <laughs> in the other one, they at least us. fall over. Yeah, they go to, like, arrest Yoda, and they, he just, like, pushes them, and they all fall over. I like <laughs> He's just sitting there in his chair. He's not even got, like, a desk or anything. Yeah, but he's looking out at space. <laughs> he just... He, he's so evil, he just sits and looks at things. Although, wouldn't they not see stars in space? Probably not. There's probably too much light in the ship. Yeah, like... Unless they have some sort of weird, like filters on their windows or something yeah maybe but windows into space is something that's like not very common in, in well I, I mean i was gonna say not very common in star wars but it actually is pretty common i'm gonna take the, that back they all all the ships have windows and things yeah they all have like windshields and stuff yeah <laughs> like, like, a, like cars or something like, like a, han's like a detective now my this here I'm on the case this here ship looks like a ship it's like the police officers in Fargo. And they're like, well, this guy's dead over here, and there's the other guys over here. What's going on? Well, good job, R2. She's no trace of her whatsoever, even though she's in this forest. Like, the, not even two miles away. Well, also, they're like, oh, there's no trace of, like, life or anything. <laughs> Moments after this, they get ambushed by, like, hundreds of Ewoks. Yeah. Well, there's a bit of life right there. What is that? I don't know, a deer? It looks like a deer. It's got a deer's leg. It's got like a baboon's face or something. <laughs> See, Chewie falls in this trap, not Luke. Wait. Where's the rest of their, like, rebels with them? Prune face is in charge. You'll take care of it. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, do the rebels even show up to, like... Help them? Yeah, when they attack the bunker, are they even there? Yeah, they are, I think. Oh, yeah, there, there's some of them there. There's the one guy with the beard. Well, yeah, there's the uh, but... bootleg Captain Rex. Yeah, I don't like that retcon. Well, yeah, it doesn't make any sense because Captain Rex is supposed to age like four times faster than a normal human, so he'd be, you know, dead. <laughs> They're like, oh, yeah, let's for this this raid on this Imperial outpost to, to stop <laughs> let's the Death send Star. A let's 90 send a, year old a, man. An 112 year old man to do it. <laughs> yeah, like it. That'd be like, that'd be like getting like a World War One veteran to come and like fight in Iraq or something. You know, like, <laughs> that's not <laughs> happening. What the hell are you doing? That's oh, there's Paplu. 
That's Peplu? I think so. <laughs> so I that's think... that's drunk Warwick David? Oh, that's it's Kenny Baker, yeah. Yeah. I like that guy. With the little butt shield. <laughs> like these guys, they're all like different looking, which is nice. Yeah, I think it's cool though that they're all different. Like, there's mm-hmm. not one that's like, oh, there's a couple <laughs> where you see them and they're like, that one looks similar. Yeah, but that, they all look like their own people. That guy's scary. Yeah, that one. <laughs> and they have their own like language and everything, mm-hmm. and like, they're very well realized. I think the the original plan was to have Wookies, and I think. A lot of people say it's like an issue of like getting enough costumes, but I think it's more so getting enough people who are taller than everyone else to be uh, Wookiees because they have to all be about Chewbacca's height, and yeah. that's pretty extreme. It's a lot easier to find people who are shorter than Carrie Fisher and Mark Hamill than it is to find people who are like as tall as Pierre Mayhew. Yeah, it's I not mean, a matter of like fabric because they had leftover costumes from the holiday special uh, <laughs> that they could have used. We could have saw we got saw Itchy on the big screen. Well, Itchy and Lumpy, at it again. I don't. I wish something ever explained why C three PO was a god to these people. Oh, I'm. I wanted to write like a fan fiction of the Ewok movies in this, tying everything together, and like doing it like thirty years later, and there's like an Imperial outpost and stuff. I, I have ideas, Will. But um, <laughs> what do you mean you have ideas? I have ideas. There's there are ideas up in my head. I don't know if I want those ideas. They're good ideas. Um, but yeah, the the whole Ewok religion thing is interesting for sure. Like, they don't have technology either, so they don't know he's a robot. Yeah, like, they wouldn't... He's just gold. Yeah, is that why he's shiny? And they're like, ooh, all hail the shiny guy. Yeah, is there, like, some history where there's some tall guy who's, like, dunked in gold or something, like, turned up? Well, they wouldn't even have an understanding of the humans. But they'd, like... Because it's not like they'd see normal humans from watching the Imperials. Yeah, they would have seen, like, stormtroopers. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So they'd think, like... Ooh, skeleton people. Yeah, yeah or, like... Well, they've killed them, I'm sure. But yeah, presumably. I mean, I've played Ewok Hunt on <laughs> Star Wars Battlefront. Mm-hmm. Shit is scary. <laughs> yeah, the the Ewok culture is not very uh, fleshed out. Fleshed out. And they had two other movies to do it with. Yeah. <laughs> they had the Ewok films and they just they just added magic. Yeah, like how did the Ewoks build this civilization? Also, how did they get C3P on the other side of this canyon? Did they like tie him to the rope and swing him across? <laughs> Uh, Although I will say, all the Ewoks just being giant teddy bears, very mm. nice. Yeah, there's some uh, behind the scenes stuff of them filming this, and it's very much George Lucas in charge. Mark Ron's just messing around, and like Han and uh, like Harrison and Luke, or like, I'm calling their characters, uh, Han and Luke, they're trying to like work the dialogue, and it's like not working. They're trying to put jokes in it and stuff, and it's and they're <laughs> being very dismissive to Carrie. She's like, "Can I be part of this joke?" And they're like, "No." <laughs> <laughs> like we have to say this line in unison and she's like can I be part of this and Hamill's just like no <laughs> no I thought they liked Carrie Fisher they did they did but it's like she seemed to kind of get thrown by the sidelines for this movie it's strange like it's an odd direction to take this character and for the actress <laughs> this guy's got Luke's lightsaber he's like pointing it the exact wrong way <laughs> like Luke could have pressed the button and killed the chief of the whole, <laughs> whole tribe of the <laughs> <laughs> They're like, it's like, see, three people pretend to be a god. <laughs> He's like, oh, I am your leader. <laughs> like, you're a customer guy. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'd bow down to this guy right away. <laughs> so back in a dress again. Yeah, I, I like her, her, like, indoor outfit. Like, this is a cool outfit. But I do prefer her, like, actual military, like, outfit. There's a neat, like, kind of shirt and stuff. The dialogue feels a little clunky. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they were they, they were trying to work with what they had, and it was not happening. Yeah, like every Ewok looks slightly different. It's all mm-hmm. good. Like they're all different colors. They all got different hoods, or like different accessories. Like they some of them look have like your belts. Dogs. <laughs> like the weird faces on yeah. them. Yeah. Like some of them have belts, and some of them have mm-hmm. like satchels and whatever. Yeah, they all got like little trinkets and things. Like, that one's wearing a leather belt there. Yeah. This guy's got a skull on his head. Yeah, and like a sash. (laughs) (laughs) Boom! Boom! (laughs) (laughs) It's like, yeah, no, we're not convinced. You know, C-3PO always plays a major role in all three of the end trilogy films. Except for Revenge of the Sith. 
Yeah, he does nothing in Revenge of the Sith. Like, he does more in The Phantom Menace where he just carries a flag and just kind of wanders about. But, like, this movie, he's major major player. And then mm. Rise of Skywalker, he does a bunch, too. Yeah, yeah. It's an interesting trend. And I like C-3PO as a character, but, like, I don't think he can carry a movie. Definitely not. He can barely TV carry an episode of the Clone Wars. Those are some of the worst episodes. But they're like, nah, we gotta make a season of TV, like the droids cartoon. And C-3PO's the main character. That's what the kids want, right? That's the that's the TV show they wanted out of no, Star Steve, Wars. The kids yearn for the minds. Oh. Is that why we got two seasons of the Ewok TV show as well? There was a whole Ewok verse back in the 80s, Will. Why'd they just go right to kissing? That felt so weird. Yeah, like right in front of Luke, too. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, uh, it looks just like, uh, yeah. Like, yeah like, give me some of that. <laughs> it's like, I'm not going to tell her yet. <laughs> like, a week it was like trying to look in the eye. I never knew I had it in me. <laughs> That's a line, see, Rubio. This is one of my favorite moments. Oh, it's fantastic. It's so, like, underplayed, too. It's, it's really good. Well, and the way he does all the sound effects and everything, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's the story of Star Wars developing in Star Wars. Yeah. It's very meta in that way. That guy's got a lizard on him. <laughs> He's smoking a pipe. I think it implies that C-3PO just recorded these sound effects. Yeah. Like, <laughs> what's he doing with his hands? Jeez, he's, oh, he's talking about the Millennium Falcon. And he's like, oh, yeah, it flies. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> Han Solo, two glow carbon. Clunk. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's like hugging him. They're like, good story. <laughs> nice one, nice one. Yeah, very good, very good. Five stars, five stars. You seen this kid? You seen this? Oh, look at those toes behind them. <laughs> look how dirty those toes are to the right of Luke, too. Yeah, there's no, there's no uh, pedicurist on the whole Ewok planet. You are now part of the tribe. <laughs> that didn't take much. <laughs> They just turned him into Star Wars fans. Yeah, that's literally what they did. <laughs> Luke's just like, I gotta. The Ewoks are a stand in for the audience. <laughs> the Ewoks are the audience, yeah. Also, Chewie has a mustache in that shot. Did you see that? <laughs> I did, yeah. Oh, this is great. You know, the toes. I hate them. <laughs> There's a lot of shots of them. They're disgusting. <laughs> I love that double take. <laughs> Just like moves immediately. I love it. This is such a weird conversation because, like, no, no, you don't. Yeah. It was assumed, Will, and I read the novelization of this before recording this because, like, I had to do research. Um, it is very heavily implied that Leia and Luke's mother went to Alderaan with them to live there and died eventually, like sometime on Alderaan, which is does not match up with anything after that that they wrote, but it matches well with this. Like, it actually kind of fits. I guess. And, like, you could argue that, like, oh, maybe she had visions of her through the Force. That's what they've kind of done in the new canon. And I don't particularly like that. I, I remember watching this when I was younger, trying to piece it together in my own head. And thinking, oh, like, this is Bail Organa's wife that she thinks is her mother. Because, like, why would Leia be like, oh, yeah, I'm adopted or what? Like, how did that come up? Like, she, there's no, like, um, like, you don't actually see her come to that realization at all. No. Like, it's really out of left field. Well, this whole movie's out of left field. This is like a band-aid they've slapped on the end of a, a, a trilogy. Slap it on there with flex seal. Slap it on with the might of Zeus. <laughs> um, yeah. 
Oh, this movie's feeling long, but I think it's just because I was up till 3 in the goddamn morning. <laughs> this is really showing high praise for this movie by yawning in the middle of it. Oh. <laughs> I think I did that in the other ones, though, so I'm not going to complain. I thought about going to see Dune again for a fifth time this weekend. Yeah? <laughs> well, I want to see it one more time before it leaves theaters, you know? Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. This conversation is so weird. Well, he's tr- he's being very indirect. <laughs> he's just, my sister has it. Looks at her with lustful Wink. eyes. <laughs> that's the that's the take you chose, Marshall Lucas, when you edited this. Like that's that's what you decided on. Maybe this says a lot about what her and George were into, or she was into. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> I've always known. This is this is awful. <laughs> <laughs> like this kind of dialogue and stuff is like the, what we make fun of the prequels for. Oh no! But it's like present this early. Yeah, right. I feel like people don't give these movies enough flack. Yeah, I think it's because they're just like. Although I will say the prequels have like the opinion on the prequels has drastically changed. It's changed. It's evened out. I think for sure. Yeah, because like I don't think the prequels were nearly as bad as people make them out to be. No, but like it's got dialogue like this sometimes. But yeah, but like it's not like this is a freaking masterpiece of filmmaking currently. Mm-hmm. Like, this is some clunky dialogue. Yeah. And I've been working with clunky dialogue for the last week. Mm-hmm. And also, conveniently, Han Solo just shows up. Why is there so much fog fading in? Did you see that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and they're high up in the trees, too, so, like, I don't think yeah, it's that foggy. Hey, what's going on? Hey, it's me. And also, like, Leia just kind of leads Han on. He's just like... What's going on, guys? Like, she literally, the when they got free, the first thing she did was run and kiss him. <laughs> like, yeah. he, the continuity of their relationship makes like no sense to me. She gets this bombshell, and she's just like, "Yeah, I'm just gonna like make you think that I'm in love with Luke." But also, Han is like making some assumptions here. Like he is jumping the gun. Yeah, the way this plays out, I don't. He's like. just like, "Yeah, I'm not gonna even qu- like dig any deeper into this." Because he's Indiana Jones, man. <laughs> he's he's on to the next woman by the next time we see him. Yeah. I do like that they clear things up, even though they're not, like, actually clear. Well, how do I put this? I like that they have this moment, despite not understanding each other. Yeah. I think that's good. Shows relationship growth. Mm. Yeah. Uh oh, somebody evil has shown up. The lighting on that uh, that uh, satellite dish reminds me a lot of ET. I like that AT AT walking. Yeah, yeah, that's a detail they didn't need to add. Vader's head clips through that. Um, Holy, yeah, I totally saw that. And they've made a reference to that in Attack of the Clones when uh, Jango Fake is out of the uh, Slave One and just whacks his head on the. <laughs> yeah. It's also a reference to the clone, you know, or yeah. the stormtrooper hitting his head, you know. Mm-hmm. Thank you, random imperial man. Go away and never appear in this movie again. Thank you. Pushes him off the bridge. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, a lightsaber. They get back in the... Like, Luke rode the ATST to get there. But yeah, he would have. Yeah, that's what they That's what they kind of implies. Is that, that's what they, they took him on. That's actually kind of cool. Yeah. Which is the second time he's been inside of an at AT. See, I know the emotional stuff of this works really well, but mm-hmm. now that I'm, like, again, listening to it, the dialogue is... Just kind of bad. It, it's rough compared to, to Empire and to even Star Wars. Like, I know I remember liking it, and mm. I do like it, but I think it's more the emotion behind it rather than the actual things they're saying. Yeah.
You talk to me. You talk to the emperor about me. Wow. Gossiping. <laughs> know the power, power of, of the dark, the dark side. side. Vader actually has good lines though. He does, yeah. So be it. <laughs> yeah, talk about show, don't tell. I can sense inside of you that you are frustrated. Yeah, Vader definitely does get the good lines in this. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. I like that one. And uh, somehow Vader is actually quite expressive. Yeah, he really is. I think it's the body movement, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Dave Prowse, he did a good job. And the breathing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's a lot of the, the elements put together that work well together. Yeah, see, all the Rebel guys are back. <laughs> yeah, they had to sleep on the, the floor while they slept up on the top well, of the Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, where were they when they, you know, got taken by the Ewoks? <laughs> <laughs> like, they, they weren't like, hmm, where'd these guys go? I think I see 3PO's on the front lines, and he's like this shiny, like, gold man. Like, he's so obviously out of place that even the Ewoks worship him as a god. <laughs> and they're like, yeah, this guy. He's a commando. <laughs> like, what? Well, he's there leading the Ewoks, was my understanding. Okay, that, that makes sense, but like... Don't put him in front. He's not even ducking for cover. Yeah, but I think C three PO at this point is probably okay with dying. He's immortal. He knows it. He's like, I backed myself up. I'm fine. <laughs> I have a question. Yes. How do the Ewoks know there is a secret entrance? Uh, well, <laughs> I don't know. This could have been explored in the uh, Ewok movies, maybe, but uh, no, I have no, I have no idea, man. There's a lot of uh, deleted footage of stuff on the Falcon, like of just people running around and like operating the guns and stuff. Yeah, that's probably good though that they cut it. Yeah, it it wouldn't have wouldn't have fit much, but like those guys back there, they get a lot of stuff to do in the deleted scenes. You get really used to seeing these faces. And I love Lando in his general outfit. It's one of my favorites. There's also alternate footage of this with, like, humans instead of the uh, Mon Calamari. And it's that, like, general guy. He's, like, really stilted dialogue. It's It doesn't work well from a human mouth, you know? And there's also <laughs> uh, also uh, outtakes of, of Mark One yelling at all <laughs> the background actors. <laughs> it's like, no, you stagger when I say stagger. Quit moving. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that kind of stuff. I think it's Mark One. It sounds like him. Um, but yeah. <laughs> Sorry, the estate of Richard Mark One. I didn't mean to be so uh, mean to you. <laughs> the tongue too. That's a good. I think that was Warwick Davis's idea was to stick the tongue out and the teeth and things. Well, the teeth are part of the mask, but like it, no, I know, but the, like tongue. the teeth with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it works well. That was too sensual. <laughs> that was that was, and she left her hand there. <laughs> Yeah, she kind of like rubbed it very gingerly on his face. Here, Steve. <laughs> shh, 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 shh. Quiet, C three real. Quiet. <laughs> oh, thank the maker. This this Ewok is my favorite. Where he that's Paplu. Paplu. That's, that's Paplu. Paplu. Yeah. Okay. Well, he goes and steals the bike, and I think that's just hilarious. Yeah. So that imagine if that character had been with it the whole time. Like that was the original intention. Was that all the stuff that Wicked does? That guy does. Yeah, but. Except Kenny Baker had to go get, like, the plague or something <laughs> and just couldn't film. <laughs> yeah, good idea, C-3PO. You're not, we're not going to give you a gun. <laughs> you know, for not having technology, they're pretty good with it. <laughs> yeah. Like, they're very, they got a lot of intuition, these Ewoks. <laughs> it's because they're a type 1 civilization. <laughs> type 1, yeah. <laughs> They actually Whee! used to be really civilized, and they just fell into the Dark Ages. <laughs> yeah, they're in their Dark Age of technology. 
What is he, the Marx Brothers? Like, Yeah, look at it. There he is. Oh, there he is, Commander Commander Rex. No, I don't believe that. I don't either. Doesn't look like him. <laughs> Doesn't make sense Although, to be him. Although, he does disguise himself as a scout trooper and stands guard over there. There'll be like a wide shot when they're all prisoned and he takes the mask off and you see it's the bearded guy. Okay, that's a cool detail, but... Yeah. Doesn't get any focus on in this movie, but it's like a detail that's there. Which is something I respect about these films. Is there's a lot of thought put into the, the small details like that. Except for all the fuzz on Vader's helmet. That's that's too much. Someone, someone wipe that off a bit. <laughs> What's the continuity of this room change for their battle later on? Um, Maybe a little bit. It's a bit inconsistent, and it definitely changes by the time we see this room again in The Rise of Skywalker. They just pretend like nothing happened. Like, it's... it's it has the window and it has the chair, and nothing else is the same. Like, there's no stairs. There's, like... Yeah. Maybe it's a different room with a the chair. There's not a second throne room, Will. Maybe. Well, maybe there, there is. That actually wouldn't surprise me if there is. That's not uncommon, I think, in, like... This is my secret... Room where I keep the secret uh, wayfinding device in the closet. <laughs> oh, no. The yellow eyes is a genius idea. Whoever Especially because they stand out so much. Mm Like his shoes. His shoes don't match his outfit. I was just <laughs> thinking about that. I like how this has caused us to focus on like little details in this film because we've seen them so many times. We can like yeah. I don't have to pay attention to the characters. I know what they're saying. I know what they're doing. I don't like this line the emperor has, where he compares it to Anakin's. No, much like Obi Wan's. <laughs> this is literally Obi Wan's lightsaber, but green. Yeah, but would but he know that? <laughs> it looks nothing like Anakin's lightsaber. Which looks exactly like Darth Vader's lightsaber, by the way. It is not... He's like, you are great. You are really confused. I don't know things anymore. (laughs) (laughs) I love the faces he pulls. They're so good. Is that the first time he references him to him as his kid? Uh, well, he says, I am your father. No, I know, but like, but to besides specifically that, call him son. Where he's like... My- Maybe in that bridge scene we were yeah. just looking at, I think he might, but... He doesn't do it very often, at least until he's unmasked. Then it's like every other line. It looks like the paint on his chair is actually brown. Kind of, yeah. It's got like purple upholstery and it's like brown. It's like it's very seventies looking. Also, the knit on that robe is very, very thick. <laughs> yeah, the robe must be toasty. <laughs> He's warm. Like under all that makeup, there's probably loads of sweat. I love the Family Guy parody where like Han goes ape shit and like has them like dig their own graves with those helmets. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> The con just seems so angry. There's also like extended footage of them inside there. But, you know, it's not really relevant. (laughs) There's like an alternate line where he's like, scum? Scum? What are you talking about? All right, let's go into this trap. Yeah, <laughs> it's not the first time we've seen him, but he, he's there. There he is. Look at him. And it does like the the original Star Wars theme there for him. Yeah. That's an actual language, by the way. 
what language is he speaking? They got like a Kenyan actor to come in and just talk. He did all the lines, yeah. <laughs> well, I guess I was accidentally well, insensitive. <laughs> now you know better, Will. Yeah. You've learned a lesson. I don't know. You're a I've better learned... person now. I don't know if I've learned anything, but yeah. Well, you've learned some fun facts. And those facts have led you to have a greater understanding for the humanity of the world. And Star Wars. Sure. <laughs> I really like the design of the Mon Calamari ships. Oh, they're amazing. Because they also work like from the perspective that, like, oh, they could be filled with water. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're very aquatic-like, yeah. So many TIE fighters. <laughs> he agrees with you, Will. Wait, so did Lando steal Luke's call sign? No, no, Gold Leader was the, the Y-Wings from uh, the original Star Wars. Uh, I think Wedge is now Rogue Leader, I think, at this point. I think that's what they call him. So he stole it from the Bothans that died getting the plans. Yeah, the Bothans, air quotes. Yeah. Although, the Bothans wouldn't have stolen those plans. Yeah, so. they, they, you're thinking of Rogue One, Will. I know. Although I would like a rogue too, where we see the Bothans steal the plan and they all just die at the end. <laughs> or actually, <laughs> it'd be funny if they did like, like the opposite of Rogue One and they all live <laughs> and they just think they're dead. <laughs> like they're just like, you know what? I don't want to go back. <laughs> <laughs> Many Bothans died to bring you this information. They're all just in the room, just like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, th there's not enough comedy in Star Wars, I think. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> I wish I wish the Star Wars Detours cartoon that Lucas was making before he sold the company actually like got released fully because there's some funny stuff in there. Like <laughs> it's not very good, but it is there's some funny stuff because they have a lot of the people who worked on the Robot Chicken stuff were working on that. No like, wonder the Robot Chicken Star Wars stuff is so funny. Mm -hmm. But you'll see it'll pan down. You'll see a guy without his helmet on, imprisoned. And that's our, our good old beardy friend. Oh, yeah, there he is. <laughs> yeah, good job, Captain Rex. Why did they send so many stormtroopers? <laughs> <laughs> and I think there was an original idea to have the guy in the um, the ATSDB, uh, Admiral Veers, from the, the Battle of Hoth. Julian Glover's character. Yeah, they look similar, don't they, though? Yeah, well, I think that was one of the ideas. But I think uh, that just kind of fell through. And instead we get uh, Richard Marquand as a cameo as one of the uh, <laughs> one of the pilots of those things. I'll point him out when we see him. Ah, <laughs> oh, there we go. Presumably those stormtroopers are dying a pretty brutal death. Well, they get beaten to death, Will, yeah. Yeah, and stabbed by tiny little rocks. Yeah. Ooh. This would be terrifying. Just all out of nowhere, they all appear. You just get shot with arrows and stuff and kick the crap out of them. Like, like it's not like they'd them. be dying instantly from the Ewoks. <laughs> like, you'd be dying a slow, painful death. <laughs> yeah. Also, imagine being those, like, Imperial officers that are there. Not even any armor or anything. Just, <laughs> just riddled with arrows. <laughs> yeah. Those guys aren't lasting. Also, why are people just running off into the forest? <laughs> <laughs> that is not the direction to go. <laughs> right, let's run into the woods where they came from. <laughs> like, if you're going to run anywhere, run into the building. Some of them did. And they closed the door and they all are like trapped outside. Help us. <laughs> Please. I want to see a scene of that. Of them banging on the door and instead of Darth Vader coming after it's the Ewoks. <laughs> <laughs> beating the shit out of these stormtroopers and stuff. <laughs> Help us! Like they're literally just like coming in like a swarm. Yeah, just piling on them. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Eating them. <laughs> I would love that. Yeah. They're just crawling over the corpses of all their fallen Ewoks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Rip that guy. What is he looking for? He's watching for this thing to come, and they're going to trip it. With their rope? <laughs> <laughs> they're going to try, Will. They're putting an effort in. <laughs> they're doing about on par as what we would do in this situation. Wee! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> Presumably that hurt. Yeah. People make fun of this stuff, but it, it is quite fun. 
I do enjoy this. It's, well, it's, it's not. It's meant for. No, it's not meant for kids, but like, because I would. I wouldn't say Star Wars when he made it. He originally envisioned it for children. I think he aimed Return of the Jedi a bit more towards kids, but more so just like for merchandising opportunities. Yeah. Like put stuff in it that they thought they would like. Uh, but I think tonally wise, this film is it's pretty not dark. quite as mature. But it's but it is dark. Like there's some there's grim stuff in this. Wee. <laughs> Their catapults didn't last them very long. They piled all those yeah. rocks for nothing. Also, why do they have them so far back? Like they're just like, yeah, they're gonna go into the woods. Like they they strategize this whole thing. Yeah, it's, they knew. <laughs> sure. Oh, that's a, that's a, it's actually a female actress playing that guy, but they dubbed them wrong. <laughs> throwing in that one shot and then they blew up uh but there were other plans like there was like this older lady pilot they had they had um they had another mon calamari as a pilot they had some other people that all just on the cutting room floor so much of this battle of endor was cut well you kind of have to well yeah it's like this isn't gonna be a three-hour movie you know give us the snyder cut <laughs> yeah i'm sure people have tried to edit this together with that Let's not investigate. Why is that guy, like, green screened? Is that Admiral Piet? It is. He's been demoted, apparently. Because they fucked up all the costumes. I think that guy's wearing the Admiral's thing, and he's wearing the Captain's one. Yeah, the, the Imperial rank badges are all messed up in this movie. I take back what I said about people focusing on little details, because they screwed up royally with that one. It may not even be their fault, though. Like, it might be on some of the actors or sometimes or things like that. <laughs> he just got really fat and they had to switch out his outfit. <laughs> no, but not even that. I mean, like, just, like, they, like, mix things up or whatever. Well, yeah, it's possible. This is all, well, a lot of that's reused footage from A New Hope, but, like, mirrored. Oh! <laughs> hey, you can make fun of him yelling. It's a trap! Of that magnitude. There's a lot of outtakes of those lines, by the way. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm not surprised. They're, they're clunky, clunky dialogue. Hmm. <laughs> 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 oh, headshot. We're about to see some special edition magic here when R2 uh, goes haywire. Look at all this nonsense. I mean, that yeah, that looks bad. That wasn't necessary. I almost killed my droid, but I'll stick my finger in it. Okay, Han, you got a death wish or something? Yeah. They shouldn't have unthawed me. I was better off there. Oh, I, I was having a nice dream. <laughs> I, I was imagining I was a samurai in black and white land. <laughs> I was this guy. His name was Alden Ehrenreich. <laughs> John Favreau was there for some reason. <laughs> John Favreau. <laughs> Dave, Dave Filoni took me by the hand and took me to the promised land. <laughs> there are wolves everywhere. Well, it's because John Favreau is in Solo. He plays uh, the monkey guy. <laughs> oh, he was? Yeah, wasn't he? <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> John Favreau. What is he? There's what a man. The queen of dragons. <laughs> was... But she betrayed me, I think. And I shot the guy from Cheers. <laughs> He had weird stretch marks on his face. <laughs> Ron Howard directed it, and Ron Howard's weird brother was in it too somewhere. <laughs> Where'd this guy? Woody Harrelson also taught me things about betraying people <laughs> and that being good. We saw where I got my name. 
It was just a guy. It was just a guy. <laughs> it's because I have no family. <laughs> or no, I have no people. I have no people. Yeah, that's what I like. who, who, who talks like that? <laughs> What's your people? I have no people. <laughs> <laughs> What's your last name? I have no people. Like, what? <laughs> it's not, yeah, it's not what I asked you. <laughs> Dude, don't, you don't your parents have last names or something? I Is have no dad? parents. You, you exist. I'm talking to you. You have parents. Yeah. Stop being facetious. Han, Han Jr.'s son. <laughs> Han Jr. Sure. Solo. Han Smith. Han Jones. Mabob. Yeah, that was a... Is it just me or does Luke Hare look fake here? Kind of. <laughs> okay. That's a good shot. Yeah. The cross blades, like like when Count Dooku got killed. Look at them running. Like, yeah, well, we can we can do this. <laughs> Chewie's like, Chewie's like, follow me, of... tiny friends. Yeah, he's like leading a, a group of like eighth graders with him. Not the last time we see a Wookiee do a Chew, uh, Tarzan yell. Also, I'm pretty sure one of these guys is Richard Mark one. Not that I think it's that guy on the right who gets beaten. To death. <laughs> He's just like no, they're like slap fighting, <laughs> and they like sit on him or something like. Yeah, they're pretty intuitive with technology. Yeah, it's like we can we can <laughs> we can thing. drive this. <laughs> sure, okay. We understand how this works. All right, if you say so. Yeah, like, I wouldn't give a toddler my car keys like that. Yeah, let alone a sentient teddy bear. <laughs> yeah, I'm not giving a teddy bear the, the the controls of this walker. If you teach a teddy bear to drive a walker, he'll want a cup of coffee. <laughs> and if you bring a mouse to school, he'll want chocolate chips or whatever. Like, We just fall into chaos, Will. We fall into anarchy. The <laughs> teddy bears. Hey, the gun! <laughs> See? <laughs> They're learning. <laughs> He's too dangerous to be left alive. From my point of view, the Ewoks are evil. <laughs> yes, they are. They eat people. <laughs> <laughs> rip that guy. <laughs> oh, rip that guy. Oh. Rip these guys. Nah, they, they're probably alive. They're just in pain. Oh, I don't know, man. You throw a rock off a bridge into someone's head, they probably Yeah, die. but if a toddler throws a rock at me... It's still a rock, Will. <laughs> I guess, but still... Well, those guys are dead. Yeah, they died a brutal death. <laughs> we should do a kill count of how many people the Ewoks kill. A lot. Oh, the answer is a lot. <laughs> it's probably more than we've seen the Rebellion kill. Oh, that looks wonky. That looks good, though. But, yeah. Why wouldn't those <laughs> other doors have already been activated? Yeah. She's cup to feel. <laughs> Ooh, let me help you there. <laughs> let me put my hand right on that. Stormtroopers are like, put down the gun! Yeah. We saw that! <laughs> Han's not allowed to shoot first, but Leia is. Like, what? Well, yeah, it's because <laughs> Leia shoots... Well, Leia did get shot, actually. <laughs> I take well, that back. And it's because Leia shoots... Nazis, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> not a guy working his job. <laughs> yeah, like uh, one of Han's friends, presumably. Yes. <laughs> Some guy who just works at the bar. <laughs> oh, Mister Taylor Solo, you've had too much to drink, McClunky. <laughs> I'll tell you, I've had too much to drink. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> this is a good fight. This is one of the best fights. Oh, I think it's probably one of the better ones of. Oh, yeah, look at that backflip right yeah, there. Good, yeah. <laughs> and he falls over. There's a lot of alternate footage of this with Vader's dialogue really loud. So you hear all of the all of, um, James Earl Jones just grunting. Ugh. Just, oh, <laughs> ah, <laughs> oh. But not well enough. Tux, toss it. Do it to him. He went stumbled on that stair. <laughs> There's probably no tank where he fell. I want to see that. Just Dave Prowse just bashing in the front of the Vader's helmet. <laughs> Masks cracked open. It does like the thing like a, the one eye <laughs> yeah. open. Like a Twilight of the Apprentice or whatever. Oh, 
Ahsoka. Yeah, they really upped their choreography. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> he just poked in through the little gap. I don't know if I like that line, but it is iconic. Mm -hmm. I don't think he needs to say the quiet part out loud, you know? It's like, yeah, we know Vader is conflicted. You don't need to tell us that like six or eight times. I think it's just Luke trying to manifest it himself. <laughs> he's just like, he's like, I'm thinking, I'm saying it out loud. So you're thinking about it now. You're thinking about it. And I can think about what you're thinking about. What? Oh, oh what? What? <laughs> <laughs> I like that Vader took the time to walk down the stairs. Yeah, he didn't jump or whatever. He didn't even like just skip down the last few like. <laughs> I'd hate to be a guy on, like, a Star Destroyer. Just, like, in one of the front areas and the ship just crashes into you for no reason. Yeah, or you just get sucked out into, like, space. Yeah, you're just, like, cleaning the floors or something. You just die. Yeah. Or just, you know, one of the presumably millions of people that live <laughs> on the Death Stars. Yeah, someone's just off shift. They're just having a nap. And or no, one of the people that's just, you know, someone's family, maybe? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. you know? Like, just take your kid to work day. <laughs> Although, I would assume... <laughs> These guys are so gullible. Like, yeah, we're, we need more reinforcements. Let's send ten guys outside. I think Han shot his blaster, like, once in this whole film. What if they just shot Han? <laughs> <laughs> like, they're already getting prisoner. Why not kill the general that, you know, caused the deaths of yeah. millions of people? Yeah, because, <laughs> like, you know, they would presumably know, oh, that's Han Solo who blew up the last Death Star. Yeah, he's just, he's just mugging Joel the Ewoks, and then he just pulls a gun out and shoots him. <laughs> yeah, like, them. they like, could yeah, probably yeah. shoot their way out of that situation. Yeah. They could. They, they, they probably could. Like, Ewoks don't have guns. Yeah, like, you just... Locks you up that one. <laughs> well, they only have to get back inside to the rest of the people that are mm -hmm. in control of the base. Yeah. That's then where you can have the cool Ewok scene where the Ewoks are running down the hall. <laughs> yeah. And they're all just yelling. Wah, wah, wah. Yeah. I do like some of these shots of Luke, though, like the really dramatic lighting. And he's just alone in the darkness. It's not even that dark. I feel like Vader could definitely see him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he knows where he is. Yeah, I'm... The more I, I look back at these films, the less I like the Luke and Leia being related thing. Yeah. Also, this piece of music coming up is one of my favorites. Oh, it's one of the best. Where it's just like the kind of chanting. Yeah, whenever whenever there's vocals in Star Wars, yeah. it's different. Oh, let's, let's have a listen. Ooh, that's good. <laughs> that's good stuff. Mm. I've always liked how Mark Hamill fights with like the really exaggerated oh you see the shadows of the sticks eh? yeah <laughs> <laughs> also I like how Vader just trips falls over and Luke just hacks his hand off Bzzah! and Vader's hand falls down the chasm like Luke's did also Vader lets out a ah, that wouldn't hurt Vader <laughs> no no it wouldn't and I you know I like all the symbolism of Luke looking at his hand, looking at Vader's hand. I know it's yeah, Baby's yeah. first symbolism. but Baby's um, first symbolism? But it's like, it, it's good. It works, you know? Yeah. I, it's I dramatic. Don't... And he's like, oh no, I'm going to become Darth Vader. And you got to pander to the masses. <laughs> yeah. <he's... laughs> oh, look at that. It's well shot, too. It's well done. He looks so sweaty. He just fought with him. Of course he's sweaty. <laughs> he looks exhausted. Oh, never join you. <laughs> Give me a minute. <laughs> Just give me, I got a bottle of water or something. No. 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 no, 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 no. You will die. <laughs> Unlimited power. Yeah. That line. That line's fire. 
Harrison Ford, good at running away from explosions. Not a very good explosion, though. That's a good explosion. Yeah, though. that's a good one. Although, aren't they, you know, close to that location? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they should be incinerated. Only you can prevent forest fires. So Wedge presumably is leading Red Group? Something like that. I don't know. Gold Group? No, because Lando's Gold Leader. I don't know. It doesn't matter. A Reg doesn't even get his own group? I don't know. Ah. Man, Force Lightning as a kid, the first time you see it, I was like, oh my god. Yeah. Also, with the editing for this, they had to go back and film stuff because the editors didn't have enough to work with. (laughs) They're like, we can't show Vader being conflicted. There's nothing of Vader to work with. And then um, Howard Kazanjian, the guy who replaced Gary Kurtz as producer, had to go, <laughs> for when they sold this movie in Scandinavia, had to go and re-edit this. Because it was too violent, and they were like, uh, we cannot show torture in Scandinavian countries. So they had to cut like most of this out. That's lame. Yeah. Love the fingers. The janky-ass fingers. No. <laughs> Vader takes a long time to decide what he's going to do. He's like, hmm. Hmm. <laughs> looks at his hand again. <laughs> looks at his own hand. Looks at the Emperor. <laughs> Remembers the Emperor getting burned and pleading for, you know. <laughs> I'm too weak. Help me. Maybe that's Luke. what Luke should have done. <laughs> no, Father, please. I'm too weak. The Jedi are taking over. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? The ah! hacks off the Emperor's arm, pushes him out a window, <laughs> chucks him into space. The oppression of the Sith cannot stand. <laughs> he must stand trial. <laughs> He's too dangerous to be kept alive. Yeah, that's a special edition added. That that no, not really necessary, but but funny. I do like it. Yeet. And he lived. Yeah, he survives this. Also, you're just that guy that's standing on that walkway. <laughs> yeah, you're just, <laughs> you're just like, what is that? The Emperor just <laughs> all falls of a sudden, the him. Emperor just comes flying over the side. Yeah, it goes flying down the side. And you and see then, Vader look down. You, you, at look you. Up, you see Vader, and you look back down, the Emperor's <laughs> eviscerated, and just b- b- light just flies up above. <laughs> <laughs> you're just like, what? You just hear... Well, that can't be good. What? <laughs> then you see Vader peering down at you. Yeah, you look up. He looks down at you. You didn't see anything. <laughs> yeah, I would I would walk away. <laughs> I would run. <laughs> Vader, I would, Vader started a coup. Yeah, I would I would get to the nearest escape pod. <laughs> Flee! And of course, the Rebellion being as bloodthirsty as they are, would probably just shoot down all these escape pods. Yeah, they don't really take prisoners in Star Wars. <laughs> no. No, this is total war. Although, world. actually, the Imperial did. Yeah, the Imperials have taken more prisoners in the Star Wars movies <laughs> than the Rebels have. I think the Rebels have killed everyone they've interacted with. No, I guess they took those guys working in the base rebel, um, hostage. Well, until the reinforcements showed up and they killed everyone. Yeah. You know what I think makes this scene wild? What? They're flying in ships through the Death Star. Yeah. It takes them this long to get to the center. It's a lot of turns. F- <laughs> How the fuck are you supposed to walk from anywhere? Yeah. Like, that's... There's no way. No way. Like, let's say, like, oh, you're on the one hemisphere. Because, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. it's the size of a planet. Yeah. You're on the one hemisphere, and, oh, I need you on the other side. Yeah. How do you get there? <laughs> yeah, there's no way. Maybe I should take a train or something. <laughs> R.I.P. Admiral Piet. <laughs> Although that is, really doesn't make sense that they, you know, all go flying because shouldn't they just get slurped out into space? Star also, Wars isn't big on the slurping. <laughs> it I, is though because they this, suck Leo into space. This shot here was a decision of the the actor playing him to instead of having um, Akbar be really. Um, you know, cheering for the destruction of this. Because the guy who played Akbar, let me just find my note here. 
um, was like just too young to have fought in the uh, Vietnam War, and so he had a lot of opinions about that kind of stuff, and didn't want to show war as being this like, yay, everyone cheers his victory, you know. Um, so instead, he had uh, Akbar be really distraught by this great loss, and uh, Mark One didn't like that. He just screamed at the guy. <laughs> yeah, well, the editors liked it. <laughs> oh, that's what I mean. Yeah, they loved it. And it's really good. It gives Akbar a lot of depth. Oh, does he have eyebrows? Moment of truth. Oh, no, don't don't tease us like that, Will. <laughs> Look on you with my own eyes. Reminds me of epic rap battles of history: <laughs> yeah. Hitler versus Darth Vader. Oh, that's 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 taking you back. Right, here oh, we go. look at the back of his head. We get uh, Sebastian Shaw, who oh, it just flew, changed film grains there. Mm -hmm. And in the you shadow, can kind of see the eyebrows in yeah, there. Yeah, and in the shadow, it was a different color. Yeah, it's yeah. But I love this performance that he gives, despite looking like, you know, an egg. Yeah, he's kind of of egg like yeah, hard boiled maybe poached. A lot of people <laughs> complain that um, Sebastian Shaw didn't really know what he was doing. He's like, "Oh, I'm so clueless. I don't know about Star Wars and things." But he actually he did follow along with these movies when they came out. He liked to stay on top of like recent things to see, like, "Oh, what are the kids into these days?" And you know, well, he, he would follow along. Pretty that. old when he did this. Like, I don't yeah, know. he was he was old. He was probably one of the older people in this film. Um, like it's probably him and Alec Guinness are up there, but yeah, Brian Blessed has a the Brian Blessed has a story about I saw Sebastian Shaw outside of the theater, and he said he was in Star Wars playing Darth Vader. You know, yeah, you know how he exaggerates things, um, but yeah, this is I really like Vader unmasked as Sebastian. And <laughs> you know, Vader kind of looks like Baron Harkonnen from Dune now, and how they've done. <laughs> Baron? Yeah, yeah. Like yeah, yeah. all black with the the bald. Yeah, 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 yeah. The like egg like features. They've copied it. it, it, it tell me I'm wrong. They look very similar. They do, yeah. <laughs> and then you, you dip them in the goo. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they needed for Vader. <laughs> yeah. And also the cockpit shots have advanced too, where you see more of the outside of the ship with it. See what I mean though, like this is inside the Death Star. How do you get anywhere? Yeah, no idea. Like, there's this massive hollow center in it, too. Well, that actually somewhat makes sense, because, like, presumably mm -hmm. this reactor puts out, like... Yeah. Some sort of harmful something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Luke didn't try to save anyone else. He just was like, yeah, I'm just going on my own with this dead body. <laughs> I'm not going to save anyone. But you know, it's, you know, his problem. Well, you've but... you've heard about like where apparently in the background you can hear like fighting happening on the. Oh Death yeah, Star. like blasters going off and yeah, like people yeah. killing themselves. Yeah, I've never actually listened to it close enough, but I wouldn't be surprised if that's actually true or not. Yeah, you gotta, <laughs> gotta give a little yeehaw whenever you blow up a Death Star. <laughs> yeah, give a little bit of a yeehaw, Morty. <laughs> yeehaw. <laughs> yeah. Come on, Steve. Give us your best yeehaw. Yeehaw. Anyway, I feel like you could have done better. I could have done better. Yeah. It's too late now. The time has passed. It's, it's there's no fixing it. They did it. See, I love that costume for Leia, like the general's outfit. One of my favorites. I can feel him in my mind. Aliens. <laughs> I'm just like, what? <laughs> the look she gives of like, bitch. And it's not an unreasonable thing for Han to think, because they have made out multiple times. Yeah, although, so have her and Han. Yeah, but also, like, Han's got this gap in his, like, knowledge where he's yeah, gone yeah. for, like, a year. And this they were just true. them on their own. And, you know. Although like, Luke and Leia didn't even spend, like, any time together. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But that, Han doesn't know that. Well, presumably they talked about it. <laughs> Han's just like, oh. 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 And then 3PO's just in the background, just wandering about. <laughs> Get lost. Do, 
do, do, do. That's a good shot. Like mm-hmm. That shot. It's nice, yeah. Now, there is some controversy about this. Well, in that some people have written books wherein Vader, after Luke takes his body, turns to nothing like all the other Jedi. But yeah. uh, very clearly, there's supposed to be something in this suit. Yeah. Like, that was the original intention, is that well, they are burning the body of Vader. Well, let's think about it this way, right? Presumably, let's say Vader does disappear. Yeah. The and suit's Luke... still going to exist. Yeah. It's going to be pretty full of, you know, robot parts. Yeah, but, like, is Luke going to take the effort when he's burning Vader instead of just throwing everything in a pile to sort it out like a body? Is Luke, like, this no, but serial killer? I'm saying mind? presumably it all just goes in one chunk. I don't think it's all connected. <laughs> I would assume it is. I hate these additions. Oh, they're awful, yeah. They look so bad, and they add nothing. They're so dated. Like, the one of... Oh, yuck. Uh, the one of Naboo looks the best, and it's only because it's, like, slightly newer. Like, that actually looks... Like, look like at the Gungan with the flag. Yeah, it's like, it's like the, the shot of, like, uh, the, the Soviets taking over Berlin. <laughs> it's like the Gungans with the flag. <laughs> like, Coruscant, Coruscant right now probably wouldn't be celebrating. Coruscant would be an absolute mess. Yeah, they're killing a stormtrooper there. <laughs> oh, they just knocked out a statue. Did you see that? I yeah. noticed that. I love the music, though. This is the one thing I like about the special edition. Well, one of a few things is this piece of music it is beautiful. The pan pipes are, are lovely. <laughs> Zach Bar just dancing. Do do, and we get extra shots that they filmed that they put back into this, so you get more people <coughs> just kind of doing things. Like you get to see the prune face people again. You'll get to see. Uh, just random pilots and stuff. Who's that random pilot dancing next to 3PO? I don't know. It's <laughs> some guy. Should have been Wedge. Wedge is in this. He's somewhere. I'll show you. See, there he is. There he is. Wedge is the kind of guy to just, like, stand by the refreshments table. <laughs> That's... And he's got his helmet in his arms. Yeah, like he's... he's like, yeah, I'm a pilot. Not he's like, like I did pilot. that. I helped. Yeah. Oh, there we go. That's a scene that wasn't in the original. That's one shot I really like. See, That's proof face, proof face. <laughs> <laughs> Wedge is just talking to everybody. I stand by that if they had made Wedge friends with Luke from the beginning, that would have been game so much changer. Yeah. Oh, it would have changed the whole trilogy. <laughs> ah, Ew, yuck, yuck. Yeah, Hayden Christensen. <laughs> They should have had um, Alec Guinness morph into... <laughs> <laughs> into Ewan McGregor? Yeah. And Yoda just becomes CGI? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't like it. It doesn't look good. Yeah. That's I a lo- good shot. Now, I would like... I would like to mention one little quote I found from George Lucas. Okay. From a documentary. That I think kind of sets up the whole following trilogy. Yep. I think what happens in a project when you're with it and with the characters is which is what happened to me in the first one sort of led me along this course is you fall in love with the characters and you fall in love with the environment it's like a home you feel very comfortable making up things that happen in there it becomes your own little fantasy land I think and the reality is is I love that world I mean there are friends there it's like a home I have a home there and uh so there's always going to be a desire on my part to uh, go home again or to be with my friends again. Let let Steve know what uh, movie or trilogy do you want more Star Wars? <laughs> Did you listen to the end? If you listen to the end, comment your favorite Star Wars moment. Sure. You know, comment your favorite 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 Star Wars moment. <laughs> the real ones will know. Or in, or in five years, if you're watching this, you a real one. You probably one of the only people to make it this far. But yeah. we appreciate you uh, sticking around for the whole trilogy. I hope you enjoyed part one, A New Hope, part mm-hmm. two, Empire Strikes Back, even though that one was not our best work. <laughs> this one isn't either, Well, <laughs> No, but uh, <laughs> you brought we brought notes and things, and uh, I, I think that's it. Subscribe to Steve's channel. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, don't forget to comment uh, if you made it this far. I don't believe anyone ever will. <laughs> but if you I do, 
I will know, and and, and the real ones will know. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Bye bye.